All right, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm here with uh, YKTR's own Isaac John. What's going on, brother? No, no, not, not a lot, brother. Just a little bit of working and come here and have a chat with you. Mate, I'm uh, so keen to have you on. Obviously, we're at the Warriors together. Yeah. So, it's, fuck, it's a long time since the Warriors, it's bro. about 10 years now, eh? Fuck, what, 2000 and... You come over 2009? Yeah, so 10 years. Yeah, 10 years fuck. next year. If someone said to you 10 years ago, <laughs> this is where you'd be I know be where you're going with this question. Yeah. I would say no way in the Fuck world. What would you say? If someone oh. said, you'll be, sitting, you'll be sitting there in your own clothing brand yep. that is going fantastic. Yeah. NRL.com, you're with Corey Norman, Chico, and you're sitting across from a mate you used to play with that has a beer company mm. and his own show. What would you say? You'd say, fuck off. Yeah, I don't know. When you say it like that, when I was, like in the situation I'm sitting in right now, I think, fuck, how cool is that? Like, yeah. How cool is modern day technology? How cool is the internet? How cool is not having gatekeepers? But if you said it back then, I'd be like, wouldn't yeah. believe it, but I'd yeah. be happy. Oh, bro, a hundred percent. It's just it's like even I, like what? Fuck but no, at that bro. age, at that age, you don't think of anything else but football. Yeah, you know what true. I mean? I've yeah. grown up playing footy, and I was like, oh, I'm going to be a footy player. I'm going to be a footy player. But you, yeah. don't, you don't really think about that sort of stuff afterwards. But if someone said you're going to own a clothing company with two of your best mates after you finish playing footy, yep. be cheering, be cheering. Hundred percent. Yeah, especially like. The, the, also the type of clothing coming like it's, it's something that's cool it's not just like you fell into it in the sense that it's a company that you wouldn't necessarily create your own it's your creation if you know what I mean yeah 100% and it's pretty much built from a fear of like the reason people ask me why did you start a clothing company I was like oh, I just didn't want to work for anyone else yep. so I've come from high school into football into like a pretty cool environment pretty cool job and then when I was sort of coming to the back end and I knew I didn't really want to do that anymore, that was sort of the main motivation for me to start a business. Yep. No, it's, um, it's, just, it's insane how like all of these little things can happen that lead you to this point. Yeah, 100%. And if one tiny thing gets pulled out, you might have been somewhere else. We were talking about it the other day. Like, um, It's pretty funny because like, when I first time I met Corey, like, I, I didn't really like him. Oh, really? Like, I met him in the club and I said hello and he just sort of gave me the... Like, the Hey, bro, what's going on? Oh, like, hey, bro. Yeah, there was, there was girls floating about. Oh, that. so okay, we'll If you see. know Corey, yeah. he normally chases special. after girls. It's a yeah. normally special. And then, like, it was basically, I got, we were talking about the other day, like, if we didn't become friends, there's no YKTR. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? 100%. Because it's essentially built off the friendship of me, Normie, and Chico, especially at the start of it. Yeah. Like, a sort of growing, outgrowing that sort of phase now, but that's still the underlying theme, and yep. that's, that's where we started from. Yeah, and I guess you've got to... Yeah, you, know, you can do obviously do whatever you want, but I, I think a key would always be, whenever it gets a bit hectic, just look back to what's what was the reason we fucking started this. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I don't like. I think I, I think there's something I think of every day. Like yep. we we're talking about this earlier, where people go like, "Oh, look how far you come." I'm thinking like, "Oh, like what could go wrong?" Yeah, and like why I started. I think about that every single day because yep. in theory, it's like footy. Like it could all be over tomorrow. We could yep. go through an economics crash, and people don't have disposable income anymore, so they're not going to buy clothes. But hopefully. By the time that sort of those if that, hard, yeah, if that does happen, if those hardships do happen, yep. we'll build a brand that's strong enough that people will still want to support us because essentially yep. people still need clothes yep. during these hard times. Oh, totally, hundred percent, bro. Totally agree. Um, so oh, it's so funny that you, the way you met Normie, the way I met Normie, I think you've heard this story. I'm not too sure. Oh, uh, so well, I didn't really meet him. So we're doing the 1.2k. Oh, I cut him off. No, no, oh, he cut you off. He cut. Well, okay. So we're doing the 1.2k, and he was a fresh little young baby Normie in yeah. first grade. Normie been lanky then too, eh? bro. Just like such a baby, so young, Arms bro. Like that. Yeah, but gun, absolute gun. Mm. Um, so he come in, and I'd already been playing for a few years. And so I was winning the 1.2 and he mm. was like way at the back. And mm. so I was essentially lapping him. And you know how if you're coming like last or yeah, whatever. Not, the way, he, he, yeah, he wasn't coming last, but he was, you know, further back. You move yeah. out of the way for the guy that's whatever. He didn't move out of the way. Oh, really? And I fucking blew up and I was like, get the fuck out of the way, bro. <laughs> I'd never met him. <laughs> Massive <laughs> laughs. And you could tell, like, you know, normally he's like, he does that face. Like, yeah, just like, blah, so blase about yeah, like, a lot of things, isn't he? Who's this? Bro? What? what? <laughs> anyway, I ended up like, so it was a massive blah when we first met, but then I, I ended up coming to him. I was just like, man, I'm sorry. Eh? Like, I, just, I, was, yeah. I, was, I was trying to get a PB. Yeah, come on, bro. I was winning. Like, let's just chill out. Nah. Um, but it's funny that you met Normie in like a, a strange situation. So when, when did you actually, when you met Normie after that, how did you actually get to... Um, we, this is a random story. So obviously I was playing with Chico at the time yep. and Chico used to come, always come into training and always have stories on Normie. Like, oh, I should have seen Normie on the weekend. I used to think, like, shut the fuck up. Like, no, <laughs> like, no, you, know, you know what it's like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some other guy know, keeps talking. Yeah. Like, oh, like, no one cares. And yeah. then I actually met him that night out and like said hello and like gave me the brush, whatever. Yeah. And it was actually random. Like, um, 
I'd just snapped my Achilles and I had to do a training session on Bondi Beach. Yep. And I went up to the RSL, like just for a feed. I was like, oh, have a quick slap, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Ended up hitting uh, the jackpot of like 50 bucks. Yeah. So I was like, boom, I was proper stoked. So I was driving all the way back out to Penrith from Bondi. And like I sort of ducked in to see um, Chico because he was halfway home and Normie was there. Yeah. And Normie was just about to shift in. And um, I was like, just out of like, I was like, oh, do you need a hand shifting? Like, I didn't mean it. Yeah. But I just, you just said it. And yeah. I thought he'd say no. Because yeah. I didn't really, he goes, yeah, yeah, sweet, grab your car. Let's go back up to mine. Went yeah. up to his apartment, didn't have anything packed. So I spent the whole afternoon like packing all this shit up for a bloke I didn't really like. <laughs> and was he just like, yeah, sweet. Yeah, sweet. you know, I was like. Bro, just, were you filthy? Were you just like, oh, oh what yeah. have I done? Like, I thought, well, like, me and Chico walked in. We thought there was going to be stuff in yeah, boxes. Yeah, yeah. Hadn't touched a single thing. <laughs> And he's on the top. He's like on the top floor of yep. apartment. So we're up and down elevators. Mm. I'll put my chairs down, just trying to be a good bloke. Blah yeah, blah yeah. blah. And then yeah, so I shifted all the stuff into Chico's. Like that was my afternoon, Saturday afternoon gone. Oh. And we ended up going to a pub down in um, Brecky Point called the Palace. Yeah. And oh, we're like, oh, I just won five k. Let's go pokies yeah, again. Yeah. And like we had the Midas, so could not lose that yeah. day. We all like we're just going like jack. Like I had another jackpot. <sighs> so I, I'd had two jackpots in the day, and like over that night, I'd almost won like close to 20k what yeah it was stupid and like you know what it's like when you're winning pokies it's like winning footy you're excited far out and the boys they, they were winning too like yeah, yeah. it was a joke like like we say like gold finger like we'd, we'd transferred into platinum finger right? <laughs> <laughs> we'd gone platinum and, and that's essentially how we bonded so far out. over pokey machines that's fucking that's cool though that's just the way it all happened like yeah there's so many like it started so negative but turned into this hectic night of like making it oh man yeah. and sick. like at the time it was sort of like we're just coming into a new preseason. i'd come off injury um i was carrying i was carrying like a lot of weight and i was like oh i'm not gonna drink from yeah. october till christmas and then I was just like, because I, I was single, they were single. I yep. just ended up being like the sober driver because like, I loved going out at the time too. Yep. So I was just go, oh, driving around, got to know them. And then yep. sort of three months later, I was moved in with the boys and essentially started from there. Fuck. That's crazy, that's sick, bro. That's mm. so sick. Far out. But fucking normally arrogant. So arrogant, bro. Just oh, brushing yeah, yeah, like Just gave you the brush, bro. Yeah, 100. <laughs> uh, a lot of people like, I think that's like a common theme with Normie. Like, they but think in, Yeah, they yeah. think he's like that, but he's just like... He's actually not. It's, nah, he's just really chill. Anyone that actually knows yeah, him, no. I don't. I don't think anyone would bag him. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, yeah. But he is his own man, you know. Yeah, what I mean? yeah. Like, no, it's just um, he's just on his own bus. He's peachy. He's 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 peachy at fullback. When he's he's David Peachy. Mm. <laughs> oh, he's just got that whole you know that like cruisy attitude. Like glide. Yeah, just like glide. Just glide, like, and that's yeah. what he's like as a per, in my opinion as a person as well. Just like real cruisy, yeah. doesn't, you know, whatever, whatever. Yeah, no, I love. Normie. And like obviously because we started vlogging now, like a lot of people come up to me. Like, is that what Normie's like? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah, like he can't. He couldn't be anyone else. No, hundred percent. You get people who are somewhere in front of a camera and different yep. off that. No. I said, no, there's no. You, you wouldn't even know there's a camera on sometimes. Yeah, no, I love not. What about so Chico? How would you meet Chico? Uh, just from playing footy. From yep. so I, I come from England, went to Penrith, and he was sort of there. And um, actually, like he was shifting out of the house, and I had nowhere to stay. So when he moved out, I moved in where he stayed. Yep. And like he was just sort of a teammate at the start, but yep. then we sort of. Obviously, we're both single at the time too. Yep. So, Go out that. yeah, single, got your weekends, you spend yep. time together. And yeah, just essentially grew from there. And yeah, one of my good mates now. Fuck, it's crazy. It's mm. crazy. It's just like all these little things in life that bring you to this point. 100%. I think. Yeah. So, like, if I didn't start hanging out with Chico, if like, yep. If I didn't get a pokey win, if I didn't stop over, if I decide to go straight home and say like, no, nah, I'm not I'm helping not, your pack, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna go, go brag about my pokey win. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. You know, it's crazy. Is like, it's it's a good life lesson of like always be good in a situation like you offered that help you didn't need to offer that help yeah but you being like a good person mm. even though you're like inside you're like i really don't want to do this but it's the right thing to offer yeah it's like when you got food eh? you're like yeah. oh, do you want to bite of this and as soon as they say you oh, fuck. Huh. i shouldn't do that <laughs> <laughs> and that's basically it bro but hey maybe the next person you offer food to you might fucking they might i don't know no they won't join the crew but they'll have some kind of business together <laughs> yeah and, and it's, it's sort of weird like now you say that like the guy who brings all our clothes over from china yeah um he was like a big manly fan and i was at manly for a little bit but i never like played first grade but i was in the pub and he goes oh, i hope you go all right yeah and i just got talking to him i didn't know what he did yeah and like we just had a beer together i was like oh can i get your beer like back yeah boom and then like sort of six months later i go oh i'm about to launch a clothing company yep. he goes oh this is what i do like i bring like oh, yeah. stuff from china that's crazy and bro. It was just just from like talking to a just a just a knockabout bloke at the bar and just not being a dick just not being yeah, a dick like yeah, being nice just, to people yeah Fucking hell, and it's, it's like I feel like with the inclusion of social media like 
nothing's hidden anymore. Do you nah, know I mean? yeah. Nah. You see, like Bill Cosby, like Morgan Freeman. Oh, it's, all, it's all coming up. Hundred percent. It's all coming up. So if, if if you're a like dick in real life and like you portray, portray a certain life on social media, people are just going to weed you out. Straight yeah, away. I, that's that's so true. It's um, I think Gary Vee says it's like truth. Or like it's undefeated yeah something along those lines or truth is going to be the new currency because social media exposes everything so that Morgan Freeman one rattled me a little bit yeah it? I know fucking hell <laughs> what's, what's doing like all these it's a dodgy world it's man. so dodgy like how, I just don't get how you could be like that but to everyone like to us you look like this funny dude that we all love but yeah in behind the scenes you're this I just don't know how you could switch up like that you know what I mean like yeah. but maybe that's just he's an actor you know, yeah it's true yeah. you know what I always think is like how weird would it be to date an actor? Because you never or know. Watching them like, cook yeah, like, father. like they like have this like full emotional scene. Like, I love you, like to a dude or whatever, like crying and that. And then like you're at home and like she's like fully emotional, says so she loves you, and you're like, well, mm. this looks exactly the same as when you were acting. Like you yeah. acting right now. Like yeah. maybe I'm just fucking cynical. But do you reckon that's why actors stay actresses? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe because they aren't they can't get understand. the business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they know yeah. it's real. Like you're a shit actor. <laughs> nah. Um, <laughs> all right, yeah. Take us back to. A young, a young ice. Um, young ice. Um, so I grew up in a small town called Tukoro in New Zealand. Probably populates about ten thousand people at the moment. It's real yeah. small. Uh, my dad was diehard footy. Like he was sort of my coach always growing up, and started playing from the age of five. And oh, really? That was about it. So yeah. rugby league, not rugby. Yeah, no nah, rugby league. We had t- like it's a pretty small town, but we had two two league sides. Oh wow! We, yeah, That's, so, is that pretty rare for New Zealand? Oh, the area I'm from is like more league dominant, oh, okay, dominant okay. which is weird. And so just started playing from primary school and my two best mates, bit of a name drop here, but <laughs> my two best mates from when I was four and five, like one was Quay Cooper. Yep. And so we like we played league together and our other friend was um, Sean Maitland. So them two were cousins. Yep. And I was sort of like the friend that was, that was like our little three little then. Little crew, yep. OG YKTR, the big three. <laughs> so pretty much from kindergarten to like upper high school, we always thought that like we're going to make it. And yep. my f- for out of context, for those people that don't know, Sean, he played for Crusaders. He just won the um, Aviva Premiership for Saras- um, is it Saracens oh, over in England. Yeah, he played British Lions. He's played for Scotland. Oh, okay. So he's 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 been pretty successful in his yep. um, rugby career. And obviously, Quaid's everyone had, knows Quaid. Yeah, everyone knows Quaid. He's had his success and well documented. Yeah, no. Nah. And so that was our that was like our little crew growing up. Yeah. And sort of just all all ended up playing professional sport. And so so when was it? So I guess you always had talent then? As in, I mean, obviously you're not going to sit and be like, fuck, I'm the, I was a man, but as in, you're always in a situation where you're making the rep sides and, you know, you yeah, had to Yeah, toss, yeah, I, I was. So, like, yeah. um, obviously growing up, like, I made, like, New Zealand 16s, New Zealand 18s. Yes. Um, coming to, like... Um, I was actually, like, contracted to Parramatta when I was, like, 15. Oh, really? I used to come over just to only do, like, training camps yeah. and stuff like that. But, but like, still to have that contract yeah, at a young age. And especially, yeah, and especially at a young age because yeah. a lot of people from my town don't make it out as well. Yeah. So when I was 14, 15, I was coming over to, like, Parramatta and Sydney and just, like, I've seen this whole new world. And, yeah. Well, like, all my best friends growing up have got kids, like, that are 10 now. So they were having kids 16, 17, 18. And I was, I was sort of lucky because I had that context. I had contrast where I was like, oh, this something else outside of this town yep. you know yep. what I mean and then yeah I was like when we younger state of Hainsey like Timmy Manning was there Tony yep. Williams um, Hocker, Trent Hawkinson was there so they were all the guns coming through yep. and I was just coming to see it and like yeah. yeah it gave me like a bit of contrast and gave you like a goal to just kind of yeah. reach like I want to come to here kind of thing because I've seen it like, yeah because your brain can only process what your eyes can see. Like, yeah, yeah. When you come from a small town like that, NRL seems like Hollywood. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? so true, so true. And I mean, like, I just had James Graham on. He was saying the same thing. When he come to Australia and saw it, he yeah. was like, whoa. Yeah, so I feel like you have to see it. And like, yeah. Because like, I touched footies and like been in training gear, like I felt it, like it felt yeah. real. So I sort of had that like ambition. I was like, oh, there's something else out there. Yeah. I can go do that. And so growing up, what was it like? You know, was it, you know, financially sweet yeah yeah tough, like, or? so the town where i grow up would be the equivalent like so you know normally says he's from ben lee and everyone's like oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's sort of like that okay where, a bit like, rougher. i'm from toke and they're like oh but it was around me but i never grew up like struggling obviously like my family i remember times where we struggled yeah but my parents would never let me know that you yeah know okay I, mean? but they... I, I remember like seeing it i remember like feeling it i remember going oh like mm. how are we gonna get food blah blah yeah. blah but in the context of that, like, I've seen it around me, like, I'd go into school, um, obviously, like, a lot of poor families and stuff, but sort of the type of community where they don't have much, but what they got, they'll give it to you. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, it's like a tight, but, tightly knit kind of community. Yeah, it's a very tight, like, community. It's, like, considered rough because there's sort of that gang mentality around yep. it. 
where like if you wear a certain color like you have to fight like oh really of, yeah sort of like american wow. sort of thing but yeah once you live there and you're from there, like they look after their own. Oh, okay, okay. It's good. So it's like a typical, like in poor demographics, you, you'll you usually find, you know, whether it be like single parents or whatever, so the kids are looking for a family, so there might yeah. be gang culture because they're looking for somewhere to belong kind belong, of thing. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, um, I don't know if it's still the right, um, still at the time, but um, we used to have the high, highest youth suicide rate like per like percentage in New Zealand wow. so yeah it's like one of them sort of towns where like like someone commits suicide it was sort of like oh yeah alright like far not, not normal but like but it wasn't in. like far fetched it wasn't like a one off oh, wow. occasion yeah Jesus. so it's yeah. like sort of a rough like rough place to grow up but like when you grow up there you don't know anything different yeah be like someone getting raised in Bondi they just think that's the norm and I, you just think like that's the norm where I come from so, yeah okay no, that's crazy. which is sad which is sad but yeah it is what it is it's, but we've been yeah. um like, I remember when we were kids, like, we didn't have that one guy we could look up to and go, like, oh, if he can make it out, we can make it out too. Yeah. But sort of, sort of like, um, there's two two guys playing for the Roosters right now, Zane Tedavano and Joseph Manu. Yep. They're from the same town. Oh, really? Yeah, we're from. And Joseph Manu's a gun. Oh. Yeah. Like, I reckon he'll go on and play Kiwi. Zane Tedavano's yep. probably been one of their better forwards yep. for the Roosters. And, um, yeah, they come from the same town we come from. Like, Damn. our fam- like Zane grew up down the street from me. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's Far f- out. fat. He f- massive. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was like, he's shredded now. And I was like, oh, he's right. massive. Yeah. <laughs> and Joseph Munn, like, his dad's, like, a teacher at the high school. And, yep. like, like, yeah, we all... Just Far such a out. small town, but we've done all right. Yeah. All right. yeah. Oh, I mean, I mean, even like with Quaid, like Quaid has been a ma- had a massive career. Yeah, hundred percent. Massive career, and uh, obviously your other, what was his name? The other guy, Sean. Sean. Sean yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so when was it? I guess like so you come over and you sign with Parramatta, but the move to Australia was it like in your head? Were you like always going to move to Australia, or were you like maybe I'll play for the Warriors? Or? Nah, like it, in my mind, like I remember coming over and like everyone was so much more developed than I was. Yeah. Like they're more comfortable being around like Aussie boys because yep. like. You sort of come to learn about Aussie, but like, yeah. just competitive. Like they say what they want, like straight away. Yeah. And I just sort of had that mentality at the time. And I remember I was going into my last year of high school, and Tony Ira rang me up and goes, "Oh, there's going to be a twenties competition starting 2008. Yeah. Like I'd love you for you to be the halfback." Um, and then pretty much like a week later, I think Rocket Ready rang me up and goes, "Oh, we're probably not going to keep you on at Parramatta. Yeah. We've got Chris Keating, we've got Trent Hawkinson. Um, there's probably not going to be a spot for you there." Yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, sweet, perfect." So pretty much went to the Warriors from there. Yep. So that was 2008, did you say? Yeah. Uh, t- I finished high school 2006, trained full time, done a preseason, uh, played New South Wales Cup 2007, then played 20s 2008. Oh, okay. So as in you you trained full time with the first grade squad 2007 yeah. oh I've done the pre-season with them yep, and yep. then I've done like New South Wales Cup oh okay Premier League at the time so that's it's were there any other clubs interested because like for you to go straight out of school into a first grade squad means that you were definitely ta- extremely yeah, talented yeah I don't because I'd just come out of the junior Kiwis that year and like yeah okay we didn't really have that like I think I was sort of lucky at the time where um, like Stacey had like left and they're like looking for like halves to yeah, develop okay. they just wanted to go yep. oh who's an Aussie half that we can bring over I think yep. they genuinely wanted to develop a certain half and yep, okay. obviously but before Shorten Johnson like two years older than him yep. so like yeah I feel like I was sort of like, like not destined to be the next big thing but they just wanted Hoping. to develop some of their own yep okay cool so when you was it a surprise when they said we want you to come or was it kind of like oh, you, you know when you're like when you're young and something yeah. happens like you just think it's normal yeah like, I know yeah so I like pretty much finished school, went up and trained full time, and that was sort of like a big lesson for me as well. Like, yeah. Just yeah. So. I, Do you remember the first day you rocked up? Yeah, I rocked up two weeks after that started. Yep. Oh. For some reason, and I did you ever do Bethel's Beach? Um, I think oh, so. It's, it's the equivalent of doing like Cronulla Sand Dunes. Yep. That yep. was my very first session. I remember spewing up. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember too much else of the preseason because my head was down. Like, never really lifted weights in that before. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You go from lifting four times a week, trying to put on weight, and then yeah. Was, you would have just gone <laughs> straight yeah, away. I, yeah. Like I think, I think when I debuted, I was like 82, 83 kgs. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I was finished playing, I was probably about ninety two. Yeah. See, I, I was in my best year. I was eighty two kilos, mm. and every year when Wayne wasn't there, Wayne was fine. Wayne never tried to make me put on weight, but every other coach was always like. We want you bigger. We want you bigger. And I fucking hated it, but I only did it because they told me to do it. Yeah. And I just, I'd never played as well when I was heavier. Like, I had good games when I was about 85. As soon as I got to 87 and that, it's just too big for that me. That was that little phase that everyone, like, you need to be bigger, faster, stronger. Yeah. But you but see someone like Matt Dufty now who's tiny, but like, killing it. Killing it, yeah. It's, it did, it made, it honestly made me so angry because I was like, you've seen me play good, yeah. really good footy at 82 kilos. Yeah. And yes, I'm smaller or whatever, but that's my body size. Like, yeah. oh, fuck, if I get bigger, I'll start getting injuries. I'll be slow. I'm slow. never going to be stronger than anyone else. Like, as in, 
like for my size I might be, mm. but I'm never going to be able to throw forwards around. But I can, I can step them if yeah, I'm light. Yeah. So what 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 are we doing here? But yeah. anyway, whatever. So um, yeah. So you, you you went to that first grade squad. When was the so 2008 played 20s? Yeah. And did you just win it that year? No, nah, we got we played the Bronx in the semis and they okay. got us on the whistle. Uh, okay. And then 2009, you know, made your debut. 2009 debut. So it was like I just. I was just playing um, New South Wales Cup the pretty much the whole year, and yep. I've I was playing all right. I remember like that year we had like four buys or something stupid for New South Wales Cup. Yeah. So the week before I debuted, I was playing like club. So below New South, I was playing just proper yeah, club local. footy. Yeah. Yeah, and we ended up like playing for Otahu Leopards. I played like 50, 60 minutes, <laughs> and after the game they go, "Oh, you're gonna make your first grade de- debut next year or oh, next week." What? So who yeah. said that to you? Uh, John Acklin. Oh, okay. He's a legend. He's yeah, and then I've nice called me in the office. He goes, "Are you ready?" And I'm like, "Oh." You know, when you're youngest, like, yeah, yeah, sweet. Sweet, let's Framing do it. In. Yep. But I remember it so clearly because, um, like, it didn't really kick in until I was, like, about to. We played Roosters there. Um, like, I remember sitting there, and it wasn't until I read the team sheet, and I was playing 5-8. And then, so, number five is Money Vatevo, and number seven is Stacey Jones. Yep. So, like, Stacey Jones was king when I yep. was growing up. Like, O2 Warriors, like, they were guns. Yeah. And I just, and even though I'd trained with Stacey the whole year, it yeah. wasn't until I seen my name on that team list and go, like, holy oh, fuck. Yeah, like, this is fucking yeah. Manu's there, Simon Mannering's there, yeah. Michael Luck, Brent Tate would have been still playing. Nah, I th- oh, I think he might, no, I think he come here. No, 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 no tell you was come you. Yeah, yeah, no, he come here before no, me. actually, I had um, Jerome Ropati as my center. Oh, the Ropati, like, yeah. fuck, like, Sam uh, Rapira, like, it's uh, it's so it's so different. Like yeah. like you train for him like that all the time, but just once you put your uniform on, run out, it's like like especially on a debut, just yeah. feels like just a little bit different. Yeah. And so when you walked into the changing room, what was it like for you? Like you know, we just like Phew. yeah. I, I remember like because I was never really one to get nervous, but that was, yeah. I re- was probably the one time I was nervous. Like yeah. I remember us kicking off, and I was running down, and my legs are like Jelly. shaking, and then I remember having like Willie Mason, he was the back row on my edge. Yeah. So all I was thinking, like I've seen this bloke run over like thousands of people, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was I was too eager at the start, so I was calling over call all the time. Like I wanted the ball, I just wanted to do stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I remember like I went blindside, like dummy, and he just ragdolled me over, and that was my first carry. And first carry yeah, got ragged. Willie Mason just ragdolled me over and got, got a cork. What? As in over. <laughs> Uh, the sideline oh it's probably about like two metres from the sideline oh okay so okay, I so dummied so. and the centre gone I tried to run and he just gone nope straight <laughs> over so instead of him running over you you just got your own rag don't yeah, you pretty <laughs> much and then but then were you in the game then you're like alright yeah sweet. I was in the game um, set up <clears throat> set up a pretty good try which was yep. probably the best try assist I've ever done oh really I, I remember it so clearly um, just ended up throwing a long ball over to Paddy Arvan and just yep. sort of rolled onto it and scored and yeah good I feeling I, remember, I honestly think I remember that eh so yeah I remember watching that um, okay, so yeah, the debut happens, and, and you know, what's the feeling? Did you, you played a few games that year, didn't you? Yeah, no, I played about three games, and, and Ivor just goes, "Oh, like I'm giving you a little run, like yeah, got a little taste of it. I need you to like go, go back, back and in. focus on a few things, which I did, and then sort of come into the next preseason. I was really like amped up, and it was 2010, and um, like had a real good preseason. And I remember that was the last trial, so you know that's pretty much your side going yep. into round one. He goes, "Oh." Like, I was hoping I was going to get that little half, like, half a game when all the boys are tired, like... Yeah. And I remember going, oh, I'm not going to take you over. I was like, oh, I remember being so filthy. So I went home that night, went for a, like, run. I was like, oh, I want to get back into the team somehow. Yeah. Went for a run, ended up um, having a stress fracture in my foot. So I was trying to cross the road. Boom, broke my foot. So I was ah. out, yeah, out for 12 weeks. Whoa. This is This is rolling into round one. And then, um, <clears throat> probably the best 12 weeks, I, like, it was a blessing in disguise because... Um, Trained with Ruben Wiki for like twelve, and he just come back, and he was like, like <laughs> had me massive. Like I think I got to like a one forty five, one fifty bench. Oh really? Yeah, for like a half back. It's yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's good. fairly strong. Yeah, and yeah. I was training, and I just got real taste for training and working hard, and sort of come back like round twelve, like played two really good games for cup, and ended up throwing me back straight back in. Yep. And so, what was that like? So you obviously went through the, the difficult time of like getting injured and being disappointed you didn't go across. Yeah. When you did get called back into the side, was it like, yes, that yeah, was I, worth it? I felt like so much more ready than I did in the past because yep. like, I was like, I was comfortable in the weight I was carrying. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then like when he put me in, like I was like, oh, I've been here before, so like I know what to do. And we ended up playing the Dragon 2010, which was like the that's team. when the Dragons were the Dragons. Yep. And um, scored a try. Oh, really? Yeah, Fucking scored hell. a try, and we almost got him. Like it was almost down to the whistle. We had the last play, um, couldn't come up with the play, and then sort of. Played that game, got another run, and then we ended up winning five in a row. Yep. And then, like, it's sort of like, I think the timing of they'd just come off three losses in a row. That yep. Dragons one was the fourth, and then we went five in a row. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it sort of felt like, like, 
a sort of looked like I was a part of that. You yeah, know? yeah, like, yeah. Well, I mean, you were. You were yeah, a part I, w- of it. I was, but like, I wasn't like the sole reason. It was more sort of, more yep. so timing more than anything. And okay. Then, yeah, when I knocked out some pretty good teams, probably the most remem- um, one that people would remember the game down in Christchurch when Kevin Locke wraps around the pole. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah was, yep. Roosters. That was, yep. Yeah, that was one of the games. And then in that fifth game, we ended up playing Penrith out at Penrith and the penalty count was like 13 to 2 and we ended up still winning oh wow but yeah that's the game I tore my ACL in that game oh fuck so you go yeah you go from winning like five games in a row thinking you're killing it yep Uh, life is like so good like yeah you're getting pats on the back and how are you going like clubs talking about resigning and all that sort of shit oh so you were coming off contract as well yeah oh no I think I had another year but they wanted to like sort of push it out oh fuck yeah okay so yeah you you, you do so I remember scooting scooting blind and I went to like you know, we half sort of goosey sideways. Yep. And all my all my weight was on one leg, and I got I was on seven receiver, and yep. he just dived straight at my leg, oh. and I just like boof. And then I played the ball, and I kept playing. And Craig Walker come on, strapped it up, and we had a dropout. Was running out, you know, you sort of steady yourself to make a tackle. Yeah, I remember steadying myself, and I just like fell over fell flat. Over. And uh, yeah, no good. And then yeah, went for a scan. Said you done your ACL. Oh man, it's okay. So. What's that feeling like? Like, because you would have thought about everything. Like, look, I, I was just going through contract talks. Yeah. I'm going to be out for ten months, six months, ten months. It's just like it's that like those three letters like scares like sporting ACL ACL scares yeah. people across like the world like because NBA one, basketball. Yeah. And I remember one of the players go, "I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy." Yeah, like, I was just like, "Oh, is, is that, that what is like, that bad? <laughs> is it? Like, he said that to you." Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't he, want to hear that. Yeah, he's like, saying it about someone else. Oh, okay. Yeah, because okay. he'd just come back from, it and I remember it so clearly. <clears throat> yeah, because it's sort of got a photographic memory. I can remember a lot of stuff. Yeah, and that was like one of the things I remember him saying. But yeah, it was like um, obviously that was like round nineteen. I done it. Yeah, just sort of leading into. I guess that's semi lucky, you know, like end of the year. Yeah, yeah, and like we weren't too sure if we we're gonna make finals or yep. all that sort of stuff. But yeah, like if, if you were to do it, that'd sort of be the time. Yep. Fucking hell. Okay, yeah. so what what was that period like for you? Because like one of, one of the most influential parts of my life, because um, when I'd done it, like I was feeling that sorry for myself. Blah blah blah. Michael Lark, obviously. When you yeah. when you watch you know when you watch people play footy you like oh, he must be dumb like, yeah. you, you know when you watch lucky players yeah, he's, he's always a, in the wrong place he's a maniac. getting knocked out yeah. like you just and like when you when you watch him play you are like oh he just must be a mongrel yeah he yeah. must be a mongrel but when yeah. you talk to him he's one of the smartest people and yeah. that's one thing I always admire about people like context of conversation um, you sweet yeah sweet. context of conversation. Um, like he just knew a lot about everything, yep. and he goes to me, "Why don't you start reading books?" But it's like it's like the gift that keeps on giving, and he sort of gave me the first three books I needed to read. So I was on the bike of ACL. He gave me a book about like it's not about the bike by Lance Armstrong, yep. and that's the first like cognitive bias of like contrast. Yep. Like he goes, "Oh, you've done your like ACL, but that's not bad to like that's not bad to cancer." Yeah, do you know what I mean? So yeah. goes, oh, maybe my life's not that bad. It could be worse, kind of thing. Like yeah. you've got your health, you're going to recover. So he gave me my first three books to read and sort of just got a taste from it from then. And yep. I, I wouldn't sit here as a business owner if I reckon if, we, if I didn't have that conversation. You didn't get intro- introduced to like knowledge really in books. Knowledge, yeah. yeah. And just like, just gave you perspective, you know what I yeah, mean? So yeah. when you grow up, you can only see what your parents have done, what your friends are doing around you. You don't really have like vision like that. Yeah. So and that's all I knew. Like, so I, how did the conversation go about with luck? Like, what oh, because I was living with Jake Lilliman at the time, and yep. they were they were boys. So I used to go out for dinner, and like I just used to be like sit there and just listen to him because yep. he had he just knew about everything. Yeah, and I, I really liked that. And then yeah, he just he goes, I go, how's he so smart? He goes, oh, he just reads all the time. Mm. Yeah, so he gave me the first three books. I think it was like, not about the bike. Um, I think the other one was Outliers by Malcolm Malcolm Gladwell. Which yeah, is a yeah, well-known yeah. Book. Um, that's the what ten thousand hours one. Yeah, that's yep. it. And something else, and I've just, I just—I remember reading. I always felt good after reading, and yeah, yeah, just I don't know, just opened up a different like, different pers- perspective on a lot of things. It's crazy to think how many people don't realize how important books are. Oh, it's stupid. Like, stupid. I mean, I could go, oh, like, people think it's nerdy, and it's like oh, it's fucking not. You know, it's yeah. nerdy. Nerdy is not doing it. It's just like what, like is books. That stigma about it. I don't get it. Yeah. I don't get it. Like they are some of the most powerful tools. They're probably the most powerful. The most powerful tools in the world mm. because they can change an knowledge. I- knowledge is power. An, yeah, an idea changes the world, not mm. a weapon. Followed by action, though. Yeah, everyone's, that's got, true. everyone's got ideas. That's true. That's true. Mm. But it, like, and ideas are what matter. Yeah. You know, like if ideas are what create, you know, 
things, whatever it is, you know. Uh, on anything, I, anything in this room right it, now is off an idea. From an idea. Like Steve Jobs changed the world yeah. with an idea, you know. Microphone, like microphone, fuck, all of it, all of it. So yeah, and it all comes out of books and building upon other people's ideas it and is, yeah. you know evolving into the next little whatever idea it is. So yeah, I've, I I never understood that, but I, I I was pretty lucky. I was like. I grew up like with education stuff, whereas a lot of people that play footy are from poorer demographics, so they don't yeah. have as much access to stuff. So true though. But yeah. like um, when I was growing up, like I'd done well in school, but I, like I was in the smart class. Yeah. But I was average in a smart class because I just done what I need to do. Yeah, to yeah. Because yeah. my mum used to go, if you don't do well in school, you're not playing footy. Yeah. So when footy was like my life, I'm like, I'm, I'm just doing enough to get past. Yeah, so yeah. Go run out of yeah. the footy field with my mates. Yeah. But I'm glad she done that. Oh, 100%. Totally. totally. So, okay. So that happens. You've got a year left to get on your contract. When did you come back and be able to play again? And what was it like? No, nah, so we come back um, come back in the new season, round one, James Maloney got um, suspended yep. for knocking someone off the ball at Eden Park and I was called me in the office because oh, I was not really happy with how he was going, here's a good chance for you because he was suspended for a couple of weeks, yep. I go, you're straight in, like we want to see how good you can go, like see yep. like where your future lies yep. and I think that offer like a couple of year contract at the time. Um, had interest from a few other clubs oh, as so well. So Warriors offered a couple year contract. Yeah, okay. yeah, and I was like, oh, I'm just going to back myself. Yeah, went to play um, like like hard over round two, 2010. That's when Benji's like Benji's Benji. Yep. you know what I mean. Step in everyone, rolled my ankle. Oh my god. <laughs> this first is the game back. Yeah, the first game back, rolled my ankle. Didn't even make like just after half. I rolled it in like the third minute and played on it. Went in half time, just got worse, and then yeah, ended good. up getting pulled off. Um, they would put me out for six, seven weeks. Like it was a pretty bad one. So te- ligament tears. Yeah, ligament yeah. tears. Bar, bar, bar. And then pretty much Sean Johnson come in. No, this would have been 2011. Yeah, but Maloney would have started playing good then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maloney. But then like I went out um, 2011. Emergence of Sean Johnson. And, and just, then boom, he was the half. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. So what, what was contract talks like then for you? Um, they're like, oh, we want to push you out for a couple of years. Like. Um, like obviously like okay money but I yep. was like oh I feel like I can back myself here back yep. myself didn't work and then I signed like a one year um, extension yep. Louis McLennan come in the week before the grand final that year all three grades made grand final I was captain of the New South Wales Cup side we yep. got done on the hooter okay. again yep. um, <laughs> done on the hooter and injuries that's the story of my footy <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah pretty much like the Tuesday before we flew over for a grand final all three grades he goes oh I'm the coach here next year like there's not a spot for you here oh really yeah I was, he goes you'll still sign well you can come in blah 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 goes, as in as in New South Wales Cup or no, first grade no first grade first grade he goes oh you can stay here if you want like but you're not you're not going to get a run no matter what oh fucking hell so, so yeah I was sort of 21 at the time so the, the, like the people <laughs> that are listening is like there's not a spot for you there yeah. and you can't stay yeah he's saying to you I'm going to make it so hard I'm going to make the decision the the Two choices. One is so hard that yeah. you're going to have to leave because we want to get rid of you. Yeah, basically. And we don't want to have to pay you. And he goes, he goes, oh, you can stay here if you want, but then you're just going to get paid like reserve grade money in yep. your next contract after that if you yep. continue to pursue. So it was sort of like a week, and I'll try to look over in Australia, but there was yep. sort of nothing yep. here because it's sort of that back end, like everyone's sort of like, it's not like now where like people can get a contract the week before pre season stuff. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? They were sort of locked into their 25 pretty yep. early. And so, yeah, I talked to my manager, ended up over in England. England. So what was the uh, you know what was it like over in England? Hated it. Hated it. Hated yeah, it. most yeah. people fucking hate it. Eh? Yeah, it's just That's, tough. Like I went over there at the start, really enjoyed it. Like don't get me wrong, the blokes like some of the best banter I've ever had. Like yep. I went to Wakefield Wildcats. Yeah, uh, we had a group of guys there, and they were like probably the funniest like blokes I've ever met. Oh really? You know what I mean? Like yeah. just their banter, just the English like people. They don't take anything too seriously. It was just so fun. Constant, but, constant piss take kind of thing. Yeah, yep. it's ruthless too. Yeah, so, like, <laughs> I feel like. I thought over here is ruthless, but it's even more ruthless. But you know what? Like, um, you would have been to other clubs, but Warriors was nowhere near as bad as Broncos. Yeah. Oh, do you know, like, because I've hung around Normie and that, like, that, I could say anything to Norrie straight to his face and just. Bro, 100%. When I I come into the Broncos, I didn't, like, I got, for the first probably two years, I got treated like I was nothing. Like, just fucking, because this was when it was like the big dogs. Like, the team was pretty much Australia. Like, yeah. Like, fucking. Berrigan and Hodge like Petro oh, when, when Berrigan come to the Warriors like, he used to stay stuff and I was just sitting there go right like, it got to a point <laughs> so all the, so all of us moved on like yeah all of us like older guys in that Broncos like period of like 2005 till about 2009 10 mm-hmm. 
when we all moved on, it got to a point like because there was still some lingering. Yeah. That they had to pull their team in. This is when I'd left and everyone left and say, guys, you've got to. This has to stop. This has been too, going for too long. Too long. Because the banter was so hectic. Yeah. I would walk in, bro, and I'd just get fucking. What the fuck is that? Like yeah. you're fucking shit, rah rah. But it was. It sounds bad. That's it a sounds bad. Builder, isn't it? It, yeah, it is a character builder. <laughs> that's for sure. It sounds bad, but it was actually. The, if if they didn't say anything to you, that's when you had something to worry about. Yeah. So there were some guys in the squad. And we're gonna say, there were some guys in the squad where they didn't get sprayed, and it was like, and they were outcasts. Yeah. If you got sprayed and you were one of the younger boys, they're testing you. They want to see whether you can take it. Mm. And I remember Berrigan pulled me aside one one day, and he and we're at, we're at Normby on the drink. Yeah. Got Normby up in Brisbane. Yeah, yeah. And he just said, "Look, man, I know you're you're fuck, you're a bit of a weird cunt. You're different, but <laughs> fuck, I tell you what, bro." <laughs> You're one of us now. You're one yeah. of us. I respect you. And, and that's you're one what you of want, us. Eh? That's all and you after want. that, it was it. And, I, and yeah. it took me years, bro. Like, it took me like literally two years of just getting smashed yeah. to finally earn their respect. And I earn their respect. But mm. um, yeah, so anyway, Broncos banter is fucking hectic. It was yeah. so bad. Anyway, um, so yeah, go to England. Yeah, yeah. go to England. Like, go along with the boys as well. But yeah. just like sort of clash with the coach where. Um, he sort of signed me over there for like two, three years and yep. like on like a lot more money than I was ever on over in, at the Warriors. And um, yeah, sort of like, like he was a good coach. Like technically he could like, he taught me like a lot. Yeah. But just the way he sort of man managed people, like his, like the way he coached was like, oh, I'm the boss. I'll stand over you. I'll spray you. Not yep. that I was like, like petty to a spray or anything like that. Just the way he used to sort of used to go about it and like same sort of thing. Called me in the office one time. Goes, no matter how well you train, no matter how well you play, I'd rather put like he's knocked off five different names. Three of them yeah. were like back rollers. I'm just, I'd rather put these guys at five eight than you. And I was like, I was just like the thing was I didn't really have an answer. Like I was like, if I knew why, like yeah, I feel yeah. like I feel like I'm self aware enough to know like if I'm not good enough for a team, like I'd understand why. But I never got that clear sort of thing. Like he didn't say like. Your passing game is, needs to be better. Yeah, you're not it, tackling well enough. Here's all the missed tackles you've done. Yeah, just you, just stuff like improve just, that and get better. Yeah. I just I just wanted an answer. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he sort of just come in and like he used to do stuff like like you'll be in the video, like everyone's sitting down. And he goes, "Oh, you stand up." So you sort of stand up like you're a kid, and he'd be like, "What the fuck were you thinking here?" Oh my god! <laughs> you just, like you intentionally yeah, did it. It's like you're a kid and yeah. you only stand up in the assembly. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And it's like like not, not that like. Like that's okay, did you know what I mean? But it's just constant, and then one and one every now and then, like all right, a cop of mad spray. Yeah, but, but he'd, he'd go through the team and go like, "You stand up," and then one, <laughs> <laughs> and like, because the boys are ruthless. As soon as by the time you get to the bottom of the door, the further group chat's going off. Going yeah, off, yeah, like, getting smashed. Lieutenant the Dang, boys. Lieutenant Dang, you just got your legs blown off. <laughs> so, oh, it was so, like, what the fuck? Yeah, man? I don't know. He was just so like temperamental, like you. You're like walking on eggshells around him. Like, yeah, it was yeah. weird. Like sometimes he was your best mate, then other times you're like, "Fuck no!" I, like, you know, it sounds like it sounds like he was dealing with pressure and he was taking it out on everyone else. Yeah, and it was weird. And apparently, like um, they were, like because they got promotion relegation over there a couple of years later, where they had the point where they were, might get relegated. Apparently, like he walked out because he didn't want to have that on his resume as being the coach that. Uh, like so, maybe that like yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's always a projection of your own. Like, you know, for example, like Wayne, he's so good. Like, he would never fucking go stand up and spray the fuck yeah. out of someone. Yeah. Such a good man manager, you know. He knows, yeah, it's so important, know, man. Yeah. It's so important. Because, like, this, everyone's... You, if you're at that point, you've got the talent at least mm. to be what you need to be. Yeah. It's about who can bring the best out of you. Who can pull you up a bit further than what like, you can. The skill set and footy is all the same, man. Like, yeah, I can walk in and say, go, like, just say possible. Yeah. That's what you do when you get to this post. Like, do yeah. you know what I mean? But Straighten that, up, hit him out the back. Like, it's yeah. literally the only play that <laughs> oh. hits short, hit out the back, back yeah. or a cutout ball. That's if his it. hips are turned, pass it, if it's out, run. Like, do you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's basic skill set yeah. of footy. Is, but then, if you get a coach that can man manage and yeah. get the best out of you week in, week out, yeah. that's when you know you've got yeah. a good coach. 100%. Okay, so... What was it at that point where he said, "Look, I'd rather play five people than you"? What, what did you say? Would you look? I'm gonna I'm gonna stay this contract out. What, yeah. So ba- so this was sort of halfway through my first year, and like wasn't playing me. I was just sort of like floating about, and then um, I come back for the off season, and then um, I was like, "Oh, I'm not going back." Like yeah. I was like, I'm, "I've had enough," because like mentally it broke me down. Like, yeah. Because I was 21, I was over sort of over there on my own at the time as well, and like living on my own, just like you just in it, like it's pitch black at 3:30, 4. Yeah. I'm just sitting here on my own. Like, I want you to eat dinner at five because there's nothing else to do. Yeah. And just just a lot of time, thinking time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I come back. And then I remember sitting there. It was like two days before I was meant to fly back. And then I was going, oh, fuck, I'm going to go back, have yeah. another crack. Went yeah. back over, trained the house down. Like, I was like, 
like near the front and fitness like we're doing ball skills like i was like stripping like we're doing like um first team versus second team and like it's not like second team over here where you've got like say five or six first graders in your side we had like kids yeah and like pulling them apart with plays um timmy smith was our half at the time yeah first trial he got injured i jumped on ended up scoring one or two tries like something like that yeah and then we went to the major trial where like, it's going to be a squad. team yeah so timmy was out for a couple of weeks um, I was like, oh, it has, like, has to be surely, me. Yeah. yeah, surely. And so he put two kids in front of me, he played. He goes, oh, you'll play off the bench and you're coming on that hooker. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, like, you know, for a half hooker is like the worst. Yeah, worst yeah, position yeah. yeah. And it's totally different. It's not so, even close. So we got to Doncaster. This is like last try before the big one. I'm sitting there on the bench, start snowing. Uh-huh. I'm sitting on the bench and it was four minutes to go. He goes, yep, jump on. Oh. jumped on boom finger like you know mallet finger just oh. Oh. and i remember like it was freezing cold my fingers yeah. out of place i'm playing hooker i'm just in there going what am i doing? yeah I, at that point i was like fuck get me the fuck out of here yeah yeah hmm. and so what did you go to him that week and just go look i'm out here nah nah i stuck it out like i had the week off we went into round one i was like because like the boys didn't obviously perform too well i was like oh yeah. maybe i'm still a chance here yeah and like goes like he put him back and goes oh you like you you be training well you're training, i'm just not gonna play out so he's just like doing everything to get yeah, rid of Yeah, and also you know, I was calling up the trainer, I was doing extras in the morning, like I was so fit, I was yeah. like, I was in a really good place, but it like ended up paying dividends in the long run because sort of two weeks later, Ivan rang me up, he goes, oh, I need a backup half, do you want to come back? Yep. I was like, yep, sweet. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Like how lucky is that? I so walked, good nick. Yep, yeah, good nick, like I trained, trained my ass off, I sort of had a point to prove at the yep. same time. I, I, back, like, I backed my ability, like, yep. wasn't going out to try and prove anyone wrong, I just wanted to prove myself right at yep. the time. And yeah, so I uh, walked into the office. I was like, oh, I've got a contract, but oh, I'm potentially going back to Aussie, but I'm not leaving without like... Payout. Payout. Yeah. I, I would have walked out for free. Yeah, like, yeah. You know what I, mean? I just something. went for the bluff and yeah. ended up paying off. Like, oh, really? Oh, we'll pay you half your contract. Yep. Um, yeah, oh, you got to book my flight home. They booked my flight home the next day. <sighs> Walked up to the airport with like three bags. They go, you can't take all those bags. They've only booked you for like... 15 kgs oh. Is, <laughs> oh my god yeah so that's like so disrespectful yeah so that's like a domestic flight you yeah, know what yeah, I mean yeah. so I've rocked up with like a suitcase and a footy bag and they go no you can't take all that so yeah. like I, I pretty much had to leave like half my stuff at the airport like I just okay. like left it there and they're like what are you doing you can't leave your bag there it's yeah like, yeah you know they like, do that airport. yeah like so tourism what, so what'd you do I was just like, like, like oh like <laughs> can you like give it up? I can't take it like yeah, I've, yeah, got a, yeah. I've got a flight to catch um, and I pretty much had one bag flew over and had one bag started and started again. <laughs> so they were clear, like the fact that they paid you out means they were desperate to get rid of yeah, you. Yeah, Like desperate. Because if they weren't desperate, they'd be like, no, nah, you're staying, mate. Yeah, like, well, yeah. If you don't, we're not, you either leave for free or fucking... Mm. But, but if like, like I said, I would have walked out like yeah. half paid to leave. You know, yeah, <laughs> but, but you know what I'm saying? Like it's that's yeah. a clear indication. They like, don't want you. That, yeah, like so for example, like people could sit here and be like, you know, maybe it was you just putting in your head that he wasn't keen on you and you need to work harder. Yeah. But like the fact they handed money over, yeah. that's an in- evidence they needed you to get out of there because yeah. they didn't want to pay you for that last year or whatever. Crazy, huh? Fucking footy, bro. Fucking footy. So you come back and, and so what was that like for you when you come back? Um, so my last day of training there was minus <clears throat> 11 degrees. It was like one of the coldest days in Yorkshire. <clears throat> I remember tra- a proper dinner suit on, like was, mm. wasn't trying to catch a ball or anything. I was just sort of cruising for training because yep. I knew I was coming back here. Landed in Penrith. It was a Wednesday before like round one was a week away so i was like you know you go wednesday and you get four days off yeah it was the last wednesday you know that's a touch-up yeah walked in straight into a touch-up <laughs> and it got to penrith it was 41 degrees oh so i went from God. i went from minus 11 to 41 degrees and we're doing fucking coat hangers and shit oh and, and playing like, fullback we're playing fullback oh they put you in fullback so as well I, 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 he goes are you like you've been training hard to yeah i'm on good neck blah 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 come over here it's just like you're never in as good nick as an nrl preseason. yeah no way in the world it's because it's so intense yeah and they redline you so like they measure everything on you mm. that they know that they're just pushing you that you're, tr- you're training in heat like, yeah yeah like you just shred you get used yeah. to it yeah so you go from minus 11 to like four, that's a 50 degree difference yeah yeah it's crazy so, like i was sort of like cruising out around the front and then fucking the big john wall come <laughs> yeah oh, see you later. <laughs> and then like we were playing like a pose like we had a like it was a pose con a pose con and like I was meant to be like, oh, I was just... Yeah, the full bag in your yeah. side. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. a passenger. Yeah. But so, yeah, so sort of climatised and I was okay after that. And so did you straight into reserve grade side? Yep, straight into reserve grade but side. But training with first grade though? Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. So I tried to sign like a full-time, like I was part of the... But like squad. second tier full-time? Nah. Oh, so full-time, full-time. Yeah, so like, I, was, I, was right. pretty, I was essentially like the next like half in line. Okay, cool. But yep. they had like Blake Hostin there at the time, but he wasn't like the Blake... Like he that was talented, now. but yep. like... 
sort of attitude wasn't in the right place at yeah. the time. So I've sort of come in and goes, oh, there's an opportunity if you can play well. Yeah. So I played like the first seven rounds of New South Wales Cup. Took a, probably about two, three rounds to get going, but started playing some pretty good footy. Yep. And so did you play for Penrith that year? Yeah, yeah. So coming round nine, um, Melbourne Storm. First game back in first grade against Melbourne Storm. We're paying 11 bucks. Beat them. Beat them? Yeah. Fuck. Did you have a punt? No, I <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> um, so... What was that feeling like when you get called in the office and you making you're playing again in a role? I mean, that's got to make like because I know when I left the Warriors, even though I was, I was fucking, I still was playing in a role, but I had such a point to prove. I was like, no, nah, I wasn't a one year wonder. Yeah. The Warriors, it just didn't work out for me. I went back to the Broncos and then I played round one, 2010. Yeah. Played really well and I just fuck. I'll never forget that feeling of yeah. like if you put your head down and put give it everything, you'll get it. As I was like, as like you exactly what you said, like it was accumulation, like. Well, he put me in the office, like, oh, you're getting to run this week. Like, I just need you to do this. this. Yep. And I was like, I was sort of like two years wrapped up into one. Like, yep. I don't want you injured. I don't want you injured. I don't want you. And then someone goes, I want you. Yep. And that's what you need to hear sometimes, you know yep. what I mean? And we're like, like, they had the big three. They had everyone on deck and we ended up getting them. And I was sort of like when I was at the Warriors, like they'd come off like four or five losses. I sort of come in and we ended up winning a couple of games in a row. Yeah, like so you played a couple of games in a row? Yeah, I played the rest of the season. Oh, played, wow. Played 5-8 yep. and played like pretty well. And yep. sort of the week after we played Melbourne, we ended up playing the Warriors. Yep. So that was like another, like I've gone like full circle, like yep. come around back to where I started and we ended up beating like 64 something. Oh, and I scored out. a hat trick. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So that, that period in your life, like, you don't maybe you don't realize I didn't realize it at the time, but it teaches you so much about fucking hard work and just and hanging in there, yeah, yeah hanging in there. Yeah. And then, did you feel that at the time? Yeah, hundred percent. Like um, a lot of people, like oh, you've proved a lot of people wrong. Like there was never a motivation for me. Like proving someone wrong, it sort of comes from like a negative place. Yeah, like, I just wanted to prove myself right. Like oh, like oh, I can do this. I yep. can do this. Totally. Agree. And if you prove people wrong as a byproduct, perfect. Yeah, yeah. But and there it, was it, never like my underlying like thing. I'm like fuck. A hundred percent, and and I like I just remember when I was like trying to come back, or whatever. Like every day, you'd think about, oh, I got to do this, yeah. I got to do this, and then you get to do it. Did you feel when you walk off that field for the first game and you play well? Was there just yeah. like the sense of relief of just yeah, like, just like I feel like you drop a couple of kgs, you yeah. know what I mean? Like obviously going to play like Melbourne was like yeah, <clears throat> and then the way we beat him was like close, and then yeah, we went like Warriors. That was like oh how good because I've before the game he goes don't try and play too hard like just let it come yeah just blah, be blah, blah. and it just ended up coming like that I don't really remember the game yeah sort of like be like that time you scored you, like you know just yeah your four where it just sort of happens you yeah you're just yeah. in a flow you're just in a rhythm you yeah the only like, thing I remember of that match winning is thinking um, I have to make it to the corner yeah I'm going to this corner no matter but what do you, do you remember the other no, 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 no yeah no, that's no. like yeah they're like oh what did you do different I was like oh, I don't know you just when they, when they talk about you're in the zone yeah yeah I think that was the game for flow me flow state kind of thing yeah yep. and then next week we play Dragons at Cogra and nilled them yep and that was the first time they've ever been nilled there oh so, really yeah wow. and it's sort of like the last time when I was at Warriors where I'd come in and I'd get a lot, a lot more praise and yeah because it's more so timing but yep. a small part of it as well so I sort of felt like I've been there before yeah and yeah signed a two three year contract pretty much the week after okay and mm. so so that what year was that 2011 12 12 no we're 13 now 13 so 12 was in England 13 yep. to come back yep. yeah and so what was the next you know few years for you like um yeah it was weird so like sort of go into contract talks and they're like oh we want you to be the five eight. And I remember talking to Lachlan Coote at the time and he goes, oh, like, are they saying like me and you? Because we we're trying to see like match up stories. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah we're like saying us two. And then obviously Matty Moreland come and he killed it. And then Cootie, like they were going, oh, it's you, Cootie. And then Moise is going to be at the back. And then they signed Jamie Soward. Yep. And, and Moise was going well. So Cootie went off to Cowboys where he's at now. Yep. And then they're like, oh, it's going to be you and Salwi. And then they signed Peter Wallace. And you sort of like, oh, like, where am I at now? Yeah, yeah. So I was sort of that. And... So had you already signed with them before that? Yeah, yeah, I'd signed like two year extension. So they kind of like had already said that it was yours, but then I don't think I've ever, oh, unless you're like a gut, like I've never say like this is it's yours. Like, yeah, but, but we're hoping for it to be. Yeah, you. yeah. So you like yep. you're in the prime position now of where you can do it. Yeah, and yeah, but then like they'll sign all these other boys. Yeah. At the time, like, Sally was over in London. Uh, Peter Wallace was playing hooker off the bench for a thing. Yep. So I sort of backed myself. I was like, oh, like, I'll finish a year in better form. Yep. Obviously, they're gun players, like, got, got a wealth of experience behind them. Yep. But I went into the next preseason, like, really backing myself. Yep. And so what happened how, What happened from there? No, nah, didn't get picked. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I trained, trained really hard in the yeah, off-season, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Come to round one. Um, obviously, 
you got your marquee signings coming yeah. through. They get first gig and they deserved it. They train hard. Yeah. Um, they're probably the, they were the better players like easily. But I ended up playing rounds two to five because Sally hurt his back or something. Yeah. Yeah. So sort of um, walked into the team yet yeah, then and had a few good wins and yep. got dropped round five to round six went to New South Wales Cup again yeah and then round the week after that ended up playing for the Kiwis oh wow yeah so Quite like playing for New Zealand yeah oh fucking hell I, I, didn't even, I didn't even I didn't know that like, oh it gets brought up every time Normie starts getting leery oh uh, okay because he hasn't played for his country nah, he hasn't played any rep footy <laughs> He goes Prime Ministers. Oh, oh please, Prime Minister. The I best. mean, I didn't make Prime Minister, so I can't fucking talk. <laughs> Who are the best team there of the teams that can't make the final? The best <laughs> players of the teams that can't make the final. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so, yeah, well, I mean, what was that like? Was that expe- unexpected? Or yeah, was that it? was like, that was, it was proper unexpected because, yep. I, like, people were going, oh, you're going to play Kiwis? And I was like, Come I thought on, I was just bro. pumping the tyres yeah, up. Yeah. And because I got dropped back to, I was like, oh, there's no chance. Yep. And obviously, Fozzie was out. Um, Normie says he's turned it down. <laughs> <laughs> That's his little go-to argument. Normie's fucking Spanish, bro. Yeah, oh, apparently. <laughs> yeah, so, I, like, I went from playing, like, we ended up playing Normie at Parramatta. Oh, really? I scored, like, scored a try, almost scored another one. Like, went okay, but then yep. obviously, Sally come back. You move back. So I was playing like I was playing all right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Then played Carp and then it was a Saturday and um got the team got picked on Sunday and I was in it and I was so hungover, it wasn't even funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, was, how'd you see it? Like what were you just like Nah cause, um Tony Iro, so he was one of the selectors at the time, he was trying to get in contact with me, my phone was gone, I was like in bed. I was staying at Dean Fuddy's house because he's like we're one of my real good mates. Yeah. And um obviously like because he, he was getting picked all the time at yep. um yeah, and then someone come in and goes, oh, wow, you made the Kiwis. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm fucking... <laughs> I was that hungover. Like, I got home like 5.30 from the so, casino. Just like, yeah. probably lost all your money if I could have had a bad oh. pun. And then he goes, um, we had to meet in camp that day in Chinatown. Oh, my God. Yeah, and I walked in like dusty. I like, had no clothes whatsoever. So I stayed at Dean's house in Cronulla. We've gone straight to... Like, I had no clothes. Yeah, yeah. Like, so you were in going out kit? Oh, like, oh, Dean gave me some shorts. Oh. I had shorts and a t-shirt and like walked in. Feeling gross. Yeah, feeling gross. Like, it was just all sort of a surreal feeling. I went out for dinner that night and Stephen Mooks, like, we all sat down in Coogee and there was like food coming out, blah, blah, blah. He, he sat right in front of me. Like, I was half trying to dodge him, so I was yeah, like yeah. going towards the end because I'm probably still yep. half stunk of piss. <laughs> and he sat right in front of me and all this food's coming. He's like, oh, why aren't you eating? I was like, oh, to be honest, man, I'm like, I'm fucking hungover. <laughs> He goes, oh, why are you hungover? I was like, oh, I don't think I was going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just sitting there just going, oh, it's like, fair enough. Uh, yeah, fair that's enough. pretty crazy, eh? Yeah, that's, well, I mean, but like, what, are you not supposed, you're just like not supposed to go out just, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not fucking. Oh, yeah, like the chances of it happening were just like, yeah. so far-fetched in my mind. Yeah, yeah. No, I was like, oh, yeah, let's go. So when you put this. the New Zealand jersey on, was that like, was Yeah, it's cool. It's a cool crazy. feeling. I don't know, that week went so quick and yeah. like, <laughs> like, I was like, we had five debutants that game, like yep. Marty Tapao, Kenny Bromwich. Um, like there was a few of us so like our whole team was just getting bagged the whole time yeah yeah because we are going against Australia and they had all the guns in yep. at the time blah 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 and I remember like coming down to Brecky and there was this big spread out of me and JT so he was playing six I was playing six oh really they were like comparing contracts like far out game, I, Isaac played against uh, Cronulla Sharks New South Wales Cup in front of <laughs> Like two thousand, <laughs> the spread. Yeah, so spread out. Like had JT there, me there. Jonathan Zeston for people that oh, don't know who JT is. Goat, one of the goats. Yeah, and like yeah, they were comparing everything. Like how many games were played, yep. test matches, and it was just fight, like David with Goliath. And this is like Thursday before captain's run because we played Friday night and yep. just sitting there reading like eating my brekkie. And you know what? I felt comfortable. Like, yeah. I, like I was comfortable in my ability. Yeah. Like, I felt like I'd be playing okay. Like yeah. Like I, like I was never going to win you the game or anything like that. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, like I felt like I could hold my own. Yep. Got named at 5'8", and then he put me on the bench. So <laughs> <laughs> I've never I've never come off the bench before. So yeah, I've, yeah. Like, I've never played a test match. Yeah. I'm coming off the bench now, like, like, what do you do? Like, when do you warm up? All, <laughs> all that sort of weird stuff like yeah. that. And then got on like 20 minutes in. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like, went all right. Like, Just like solid. Yeah, went good. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, Where'd you play? Five, uh, oh, where? Like what position? Oh, 5'8". Five, five, yeah, eight. okay. Yeah. So, Shawnee, Shawnee was um, half. I was 5'8". And, like, I'd played with Shawnee before and trained off him at the yep. Warriors and shit. Um, but, yeah, like, I never felt, like, overawed by the situation. Like, I was, yep. I was comfortable in my own skin. I was comfortable in my ability. Yeah. Like, I knew what I had to do. Yeah. And, like, like, the game was in the balance for a little bit. Like, they ran away probably two tries in the last 10. But yep. besides that, like, we'll, we'll did well. Right. Yeah. It's, um, it's one of those things where, like, it's not 
a single person in that Australian side that usually is like going to go out and kill the other side. It's actually just a culmination of like yeah. their whole team together that will just like overall, if you know yeah. what I mean. So it's. And like, I remember it was like Boy Cornell was making his debut too. So yeah. we debuted at the same time. And I, like he was in my edge. I was like, oh my. And some yeah. shoulders was going to get ripped off. Yeah. Whole yeah. He's a massive hole runner too. Yeah. Like, and loves all he does, a, just yeah. runs a hard line. Hard, short line and just loves it. And he had Cronk on the side too. Yeah. So like, you know, there's a thousand different shapes coming at you. Yeah. Yeah. But like, like, like I said, like I, I felt comfortable. Yeah. And you, I mean, you would have trained, played against them already. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, in the NRL. yeah. Yeah. But then like, you, like when I was looking at that team, I was like, <laughs> when you do video, like there's usually the two main guys that you sort of focus on yeah yeah that's like their whole team you like know GI I mean? Jonathan Thurston yeah. fucking Cooper Cronk GI Palm like Kevin yeah. Smith JT Cronk Slater <laughs> Slater fuck Darius oh. Boyd yeah. um, okay so okay so Kiwis and then what What? so was that your last contract that, as in like at nah, the Penrith so, so after I come off the play the Kiwis I started talking to a few other clubs because obviously a lot I feel like I could play for, like if I was playing an Anzac test I yep. sh- should be playing starting first grade somewhere yeah uh, Scott talking to a few other oh, clubs. Yeah. Went like went from Kiwis back to reserve grade. Yeah. Played on Cessnock. First yep. minute snapped my Achilles. Oh fuck me. <laughs> so I mean like you've got you played Anzac test, you've like, okay, I should definitely be able to at least get a first grade squad contract. Yeah. And then you snap your Achilles. Mm. Okay, well, like, walk through that. <laughs> like first, like I remember after the Kiwis, like I was at, like I was feeling that good about myself. Confident. Like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm staying off the piss yep. until I get back in first grade. But yep. like, I remember that week training that hard. Like, I'll come back into like New South Wales Cup. I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna kill this. <laughs> yep. First, like literally first minute, we I kick, I think I kicked the 40 20 first set. I'm like, yep. oh, I'm on here. Yeah, yeah. I was yep. at five eight. Got the scrum. Um, went to do like a drop lead. Yep. Benny Murdoch Masilla was coming through, running like that, and I thought he ankle tapped me. Oh, fuck. Yeah, and I like, heard the pop, like it sounds like, like it literally sounds Ugh. like that. And like, I look back, <clears throat> and I was looking, I was like, what, like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, you blowing made, up. Yeah, you <laughs> blow up. <laughs> yeah, and then someone's like jamming on the ground, and I was like, like I went to go stand up, and I remember squeezing the back of my Achilles. And like, if you feel it now, it's hard. I remember being soft, oh, and just going what? straight through the bone. And I was like, "Oh, that's not good." Fucking hell! Yeah, I went into the changing rooms, and the doctor goes, "Yep, you snapped your Achilles. <sighs> See you next year." <laughs> so in terms of like rugby league roller coaster, that yeah. was like that was like you know when you go on the roller coaster. That big... was that your lowest point? Do you think? Um, yeah. Because you're like you're you had what twenty three, twenty four. Con- yeah, it's like contract like because you go from such a high to yeah. such a low in yeah. seven days, and also like. You, you, you go like Anzac test playing against Thurston reserve grade but I'm going to work my way to first grade yeah. and I'm going to get a contract I'm going to work and then boom boom gone. boom yeah Twice. so at that at that time um, Penrith already offered me like another year contract but they saw me like as the backup they're like yep. oh you come and do a job but like I wanted more than that so I was talking to other clubs and I remember slapping my Achilles and Phil Moss was there who was our um, CEO at the time and like he offered me like a two year contract <clears throat> extension. Oh really? Yeah, and I remember so he goes, "Oh, that contract's still there if you want it." And I remember like this is straight after I sent my colleagues. I was like, "Yep, yeah. so I'll take it." Yeah. Okay. Oh mm. wow. So mm. and that, that's at Penrith. Yeah, Penrith. Okay. So that, that yeah. was good of him to do that. Like, yeah, he could 100%. Have been like, they, were, they were good. Like Penrith's a good club. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're obviously like killing it now, and I know like Gus gets bagged from like a lot of certain people, but I think yeah. he knows. Jimmy what, knows what he's doing. Yeah, when it comes to the running of a club kind of yeah. thing and like taking care of players the right way kind of stuff yeah and Ive was there as well and yep. like Phil Moss at the time was really good and yeah sort of like um, had my operation couldn't walk for two weeks yep. come and sign the contract uh, right. and okay so what, what was the next you know 24 months like for you oh uh, so like sort of when I come back like I just never felt the same like didn't work as hard as like what I've done in the past you know what yep. I mean like did you lose that fire you reckon yeah 100% 100% and I used to been through like yeah been through like I was just so sick of being like just like a fringe player like, yeah, I know yeah. you can push your way but at the older being like 25 at the time yeah I was sort of more so like I sort of had this feeling of like I feel like I could do something else you know what I mean I always had that yeah because I never used to associate myself as just a football player like yep. when people go like oh you're a footy player there's yep. a lot of connotations that come with it oh like oh I will know as like yeah you know, yeah, yeah. Like, you get stereotyped in a different like certain way because of your occupation so I never used to say that I was a footy player I used to say yep. like oh I say plumber. <laughs> not trying to like pick up chicks or anything, but I just never like didn't see myself as associated as a yeah. footy player. And I started to in my mind I started to explore like a few different op- options. But in my mind I was going at the same time I was going, Oh, this is what you've wanted to do Your whole since life. you were a kid. Yeah. Like how can you think like this? Like 
I've I've, I've been back in the past going, oh, footy won't always be the biggest thing in your life. Yeah. Like, I would have, like, told you to fuck off. Yeah, yeah. You're kidding yourself. Yeah. And also, you're like, you've only got another five, six years to live this dream. Do you really want to give it away now when you've still got the opportunity to do it kind of thing? Yeah. Another factor as well as that people don't realize is, like, when you're... You can have played 40, 50 NRL games, but you might be on like 50, 60, 70K. And that's still okay yeah. if you're going to earn that for the rest of your life. Yeah. That's not okay if you're only going to earn that for another four or five years and have no qualifications. Mm. Or if the qualifications you do have are fucking just like they're nothing. Like they don't really do anything with no one. Yeah. And so you've got to start weighing up like if you do have more to offer outside of footy, it's better to start sooner rather than later, mm. like in my opinion anyway. And, and so that's and when I, you start thinking. Yeah. So basically, and that's like when my mind started to switch like... And like, I wasn't even the type of player that could just rock up and like put on a show. Like, I had to train hard, I had to eat right. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. And sort of like, off, off the field, my habits like, I was more like happy to going out, just yeah. having a good time, all that sort of stuff. Um. So yeah. So, uh, footy went downhill a little bit. I thought I'd initially signed a two-year contract because when I went to go sign it, they go, "Oh, my a few Achilles heels. A few Achilles heels like gets better. It just rolls straight into another contract." I, like, I, I remember hearing that. Yeah, but I don't think it was like written down on paper or anything. So I'm, I'll come back from my Achilles round two, round three. I'm like, oh sweet, it rolls into another contract. Yeah, I thought that was the clause, and then it sort of got to round ten. Oh, I've run me up. He goes, oh, I don't think we're gonna sign you on anymore. And what were you like? What? Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, and I remember ringing my manager, and then I was like, oh, I thought like it just rolls straight into another contract, and then he goes, well, um, nah. <laughs> what? Must have been trammed up or something. Oh yeah, like I mean? on painkillers or something. Yeah, because oh, I remember it so clearly. Like, because uh, that that was my biggest worry. Like coming yeah. back from Achilles, because I heard big things about him. Yeah. And they're like, oh, like what about this? And like, no, nah, you've signed like a two year contract. It's just going to roll into another one. As long when, as you come back and yeah, play. Yeah, as long as you come back and play. But it wasn't wasn't the case. <sighs> mm. So and it was weird. Like, he, like he goes, oh, "I'm not going to sign you next year." But then he like I still played, like first grade. He goes, oh, "I'll put you in." And, like ended up playing like a few more games and then Trent Barrett ended up signing at Manly and I got along with Baz really well. Yeah. And um, yeah, he goes, oh, would you come Manly? I'm like, yeah. I was like, yeah, sweet. Yeah, so far out. With- Did that blow your mind when they said, mm-hmm. like, no, I'm not going to sign you? And then you're still playing first grade? You're like- yeah, yeah, a little bit. And I, we ended up playing um, Normie up in, um, Normie up in Darwin. And um, I was playing, and I remember like stretching my neck, like nerve in my neck, so I couldn't lift my arm. I think I went to go tackle Rodrigo around the legs, and just got my head in the wrong spot. Yeah. And I remember like, like after the game, like I could not literally lift my arm up. And then um, just like we were, we were almost battling for the wooden spoon that year too. Oh, really? Yeah. So, and then like, oh, you know, you're playing, you're definitely playing. I was like, but I can't lift my arm. Like, yeah. I'm about to sign a contract with Melly. There's no way I'm getting rolled into a shoulder, Rico, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was, that was my last game of first grade ever. It was against Normie up in, oh, really? up in Darwin. Yeah, it was the lowest game of football, too. Oh, really? Just, yeah. yeah. Oh, terrible. <laughs> just like what, bad like, just, quality? Oh, shit attack, shit. De- like, shit. That, the game was won from an uh, 80-yard scoot. Oh, really? Yeah. It's just it's gross. Just, yeah, it's just... Well, I was in there going, this is the last <laughs> game. <laughs> um, okay, so, yeah, you... you do, do you hold any kind of like, do you feel like that whole like, oh, we're not going to sign you again? Were you nah, like, nah, did you, you feel misled or what? I feel like I've always had a broad perspective of like, so whenever I have been dropped, I've, I've seen the bigger picture. Like I've yep. never taken it personally. Yep. And like people are like, oh, would you be mad at Ivan? I'm like, no way. Because one, Ivan gave me my debut. Two, he gave me a second chance. Three, yep. he's taught me like a whole lot of stuff. Yep. And like, I still reference him now and like business stuff, the way he sort of like man managed me. Like, I want to man manage people like that. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Just the way he done it. But, like, they're like, were well, you mad? I'm like, nah, it's just the way it is. Like, you just like, you just move on. Yeah. I mean, it's just footy kind of thing. Yeah, it's footy. footy. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I guess, yeah, yeah, it's true. It, it just, it also, but it's like, I think maybe because it's a bit vague to you, like, they didn't 100% say, yeah. it's 100% a two-year contract and, like, no matter what. Do you know Should what I mean? You- then I'll probably put that back on myself. Well, am I listening like properly? Properly, you know I mean? uh, okay. Yeah, like, yeah. I've got. I'm, I'm probably like on endo for one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you're fucking injury. Pain. I'm thinking like just get pen and paper just in case I fall over before signing. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, I mean? okay. Like, yeah. So I'll, maybe I've rushed into that sort of negotiation. But yep. like, like I said before, I think I've got a photographic memory. And I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, but like I remember going like I wasn't playing well at the time, and when I've run me up because I'm not going to be signed now, I like yeah, like I understood like I was yeah, a bit okay. anyway. I just. I feel like, yeah, I feel like I'm self-aware. Yeah, you know, you know, like you kind of not expected it, but you're like, yeah, and I was understood. on, like, I was on, I was on pretty good money now, and then they go, oh, if we're going to pay you this for to be a backup, why don't we just sign? 
such and such or whatever. Yeah, such yeah. and such for all, like less. Who's, yes. Who's fucking six, seven years younger than you? Yeah. And yeah. I, like, I've always seen it like that. Do you yeah, know yeah. I mean? yeah. No, nah, I'm, I'm the same, same when it comes to situations like that. That's for sure. Hmm. Um, okay, so you go to Manly, and what was it like? Did you just not have the fire? Or did you just? Oh or? no, I went to Manly. Uh, <laughs> story, story of my career. So we played nines. First training back after that, hammy. Fucking yeah, hell. torture. Um, that put me up for five weeks. Come back, play one game reserve grade. Second game, I was back, snapped my pack. Oh my god! Boom. Um, this is like this is like a key moment because I remember like it was early in the game, like pack snapped off. I knew it was gone. I walked into the um, change room. I'm taking my jersey off, and I first time I said it out loud, like I'm done. Oh like, really? I'm over footy. Yeah. As soon as I, I'd, I'd always thought it, but I'd never say it out loud. Yeah, you know okay. I mean? And I said it out loud. I'm like, I'm done, and it's just like. Like, really? Yeah, I felt good. I felt good. Like you just released something that you've been holding in for so yeah, long. Yeah, kind of yeah. Like I feel like innately you know the answers to. Yeah. But people were too scared to pursue them. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And just me saying it out loud that time, I was just like, "Yeah, I'm done. Done." And so what? And, and that was really it. Like it's you know. So that yeah, that was like. Did like, your rehab and then? Yeah, yeah, done my rehab. I thought I was out for the whole year, but yeah, out for like eleven weeks with them. So I was yep. still early. I come back and played, but I wasn't like. Didn't want to do it really. Nah. Yeah, yeah. I was out the night before like games. And <laughs> <laughs> my 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 last year's similar situation in the sense that like I got stuffed around a bit. It wasn't really injury, mm. um, but yeah, it got to a point where I was just like, no, nah, I'm done. Can't mm. do this anymore. I got so much more to offer outside of footy, and I'm going to earn so much more money yeah. doing what I do outside of footy and be so much more successful. I, th- I thought I thought the exact same way. And I was know like, what I mean? you know, I'm actually wasting my life doing this. Don't yeah. get me wrong, I'm extremely lucky to have yep. played and done what I've done. Extremely do, fortunate. Do you reckon anyone's lucky to play NRL, honestly? Oh, well, not no lucky. In the world, no, no in the world. well, lucky in the sense that I was lucky to be born in this country. I was lucky my parents did what they did. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, yep. those circumstances, yes. But if, you, if all be, things being equal, as in, you know, Yes, most people in Australia do have that same luck. Yep. Then no, I'm not lucky. If you know yeah. what I mean, you know, like if we all oh, if we're all about the same playing that's, field. That's one thing that sort of frustrates me, like because I'm on Twitter and I'm socially active. I, I'm sure you are. Like a lot of pe- the position you are right now is a consequence of the actions you've taken in the past. Yeah, yep. true. Yep. So like people will go like, oh, footy players are so lucky to be playing, like which which they are, but they like. You don't play first grade by luck. Yeah, yeah. You, you took There's not many jobs in the world where you judge every week, 80 minutes. So you might have a yearly review, half yearly review. And then you get, like, I got into to a debate one time. He goes, oh, I'm a plumber. Like, I work hard, blah, blah, blah. And then you guys are doing like this. I was like, well, it's not the player's fault that you're a plumber. Like, yeah. And then he goes, oh, we've got, like, I've got, like, a mortgage to pay, like, kids to feed. You chose like, to have it, like, what footy players don't have kids? Yeah, footy yeah. players don't have mortgages. Yep. And there's sort of that victim mentality, and because yeah. it is a blue collar sport, do you know what I mean? Yep. Like, oh, like, it's like, why has it happened to me? Like, yep. uh, yeah, yeah. That's I, that's always frustrated yeah, me. Yeah, no, what no, I, mean? I totally agree. Because like, we, you know, growing up, like, I never went out. I missed heaps of birthdays. Yeah. All my mates had heaps of fun. I was yeah. constantly training and playing sport yeah. every weekend of my life. Was dedicated to being the best I could be on Saturday. Hmm. No, no other kids were doing that shit. Yeah. No kids were doing that shit, and so all of that training got me to the point where I was. Now, as I said, I, I understand there are some people that grow up, you know, without opportunity, and you know their parents didn't give yeah, this, I and I totally understand that. But if you did get most of those opportunities, then there is no luck, and you, you're yeah, totally right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So obviously, like, you can't help the way you've grown up or the yeah. circumstances, but what you do from that, like, yeah, that can be like the anchor, like that yeah. can be like the base or the platform for you to launch off yeah that. or the fire can give you the fire, fire 100%. yeah and yeah. there's there's like a lot of people that have been successful that haven't had the most successful start in life and there's yeah. it's almost worse if you get everything handed to you because you're yeah. not you're not hungry yeah you don't get it's t- they, what's the old saying it's hard to wake up in silk sheets or something like that like it's hard to wake up and go to train and when you're sleeping in silk sheets yeah when you're sleeping and you're fucking hungry and got no money you've got oh, a reason to wake up it's it's, it's almost an advantage yeah like, it is. Unless, you got, it is, unless yeah. you got a trust fund where yeah. you've got money, but you're too soft. Like, yeah, yeah. If something goes wrong, like, oh, fuck, why me? Like, yeah. Why me? I'm not used to this. I'm used totally. to having money. So, like, I, I don't know. That's the alternative. Like, it can be fire. And, yeah, and, like, like, the, like people used to go, oh, I've got my kids looking up to you. Like, you're a rugby league player, but you shouldn't be drinking. I was like, do you drink at home? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. I'm more influenced by what I saw my parents doing every single day than yep. I was like seeing by anyone else. Have, yeah, having a beer. Yeah, and having a beer is society yeah. in Australia. Yeah, like like 
you work at a bar. If it's a sunny day, what's the saying? It'd be rude not to have a beer. Yeah, you know oh, 100%. I mean? and it's, Look at any public holiday, like Anzac Day. What do you, yep. do you get on the piss? Australia Day, you get on the piss. Yep. So celebration. It's a, it's a celebration. Yeah, yeah. We're lucky. Like, this is luck. We live in a great country. Yep. It's hot. Like There's beautiful women. There's nice beaches. There's cold beer. Yep. And like, like they say, it's like rude not to. But just that I think people don't realise... Like footy players are just another member of society. Their yeah. job's just televised on TV. Yeah, oh, 100%. 100%. Like you, sh- you should be able to live however you want to. You shouldn't have to conform to a certain way. No. Like, that's just my beliefs anyway. Yeah, I, I agree. I, th- I think that as long as you're not hurting anyone, oh. it's not your responsibility to be like, like you drinking isn't a negative to no. some other kid. Like, you know, they're going to see it somewhere else. Yeah. Unless you're doing something like, I don't know, getting nude and fucking breaking the yeah, law and that. Yeah, like, yeah. obviously, that's not a good idea. Obviously, yeah, obviously within, like, the yeah, law, yeah, it's okay, yeah, yeah. but, like, anything else. And then you get fans like, oh, he's smiling after a win. Right? Oh, oh, after yeah, a, after a loss. They don't, they don't get that. That That's just, like, you're taking some bit of solace because you yeah. know you're about to walk in the changing room and be depressed for the whole week, yeah, literally. That's like, it. Literally depressed the whole week. You're going to wake up, you're going to sit on the end of your bed and go, fuck, like, mm. fuck, man. Because like, anyone, you'd know, anyone that's played proper sport before, knows you don't feel the loss straight like after a game you do but yeah. like it hurts more when you're driving home yeah and the radio is full blast but you can't hear a fucking yeah, thing yeah 100 when you're trying to sleep that night and it's 3 30 and you've got the game you're playing that's when yeah. you feel losses video sessions you're getting video- like what the fuck did you just do yeah. there you just cost us a try yeah. pull your head in you need to be harder especially when you know when you know you're going to be on video yeah. too. That's, yeah. like, that's when you feel losses <laughs> yeah. up to wednesday that's when you feel losses yeah 100 and people don't like you look at usc boxing like after they have a fight they'll smile and shake hands you yeah someone flogging your head for and they literally just got knocked out in their undies yeah knocked out they'll smile shake your hands yeah. it's like it's not personal yeah it's yeah. sport you smile because it's such a small like rugby league is such a small community now yeah. and then like oh hey bars everyone yeah. knows everyone so yeah. you, after a game you take some mutual respect yeah. yeah mutual respect you smile shake their hand and then you feel the loss after um okay so when when did the idea for ykatr as in you know who thought of, who thought of the name or you also so, how um, did it how Corey, did it? Corey used to say it like you know the rules, yeah. like as sort of a baseball banter. Way, you know like, the you you know the rules, bruh. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like, oh, are you are you gonna win tonight? Yeah. Like, oh, but, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, and that was basically it. I got it printed on the t-shirt. They yeah. got it printed on the t-shirt as well. People go and want to buy it, and this was 2015. Yeah. Sort of, we sort of travelled around America. We're just wearing our own stuff. We just yeah. wanted to rock our own stuff, but it wasn't until I snapped my pick so that this is like a key part in it. I come out of hospitals and a thing. I'm like, I'm gonna take this thing full on. I've got like 12 rounds to sort my shit out because I don't want to play footy next year. Yeah. And I built, learned how to build a website on like Shopify, got all our products all online, learned how to market basically while I was had two weeks off in the sling. Yeah. So I was sitting there like this game, like, like <laughs> building a website like that. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's how yeah. we built our first website. And that was... You know, with one arm. Yeah, literally. Was, literally one arm. And that yep. was the start of YKTR. Sort of six months from there, we're like, oh, we're starting to go all right. Yeah. Let's invest a bit of money in it. Let's put our, together our, like our first collection. Yeah. So we had like stuff just printed on like AS Color Tees. Yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 as you do. And then, yeah, it started from there. So then it's like one of the, the irony is it started from a, a fire of you injured, the pain of injury. Fear of not working for anyone else. Yeah. That's what scared me. Because I knew I didn't want to play footy anymore, but that yeah. was the only skill set I had. Yeah. Like I'd read a bunch of books, podcasts, blah, blah, blah. But in terms of like, I couldn't just walk into any other job or I just didn't want to... I just didn't want to wake up and go, fuck, I don't want to go, I don't want to do this today. Yeah. And that's yep. what I was like in footy. Like yep. Monday, we used to have like a triple day. It was like con, weights, wrestle. I used to wake up Monday. And like, this is meant to be the dream job. I'm going, fuck, I'm getting pumped from yeah. props today. 100%. <laughs> I'm getting wrestled in the sweaty mats oh. on the fucking And then gym. you got a coach going, get up. Get yeah. Up fuck it, pull your head It's basic inertia. It's science. Yeah. If he weighs 30 kgs and he's lying yeah. on me, I'm not, not going to be able to yeah, get I'm out. I'm not moving. <laughs> Yeah. Uh-huh. And also, he's a trained wrestler as well. Yeah. It's like not just a big dude holding me down. He's also trained as much oh, as me. Stupid. Um, okay, so yeah, so the YKTR it starts. When 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 did you go? Fuck! Like this is growing to something that can be real here. Was, like I thought I was going to give myself six months. I'll be like I'll be able to pay myself a full time wage. So I got to the end of the season. I had no contract. I didn't plan on playing footy. Mounties come through. Like I oh, will pay you cash. Yep. Play park footy. I ended up playing New South Wales Cup the whole year, and I was like, I didn't really want to be there, and probably my performances reflected it. Yeah. But um, I was just like, if I didn't have that money, I'd be like, <laughs> I'd, be li- yeah. I'd literally be living on the street right now, or yeah, well, not on the street, living in Norm- on Normie's couch. Yeah, living on Normie's couch. And um, so I was lucky I did because I thought it was going to happen so much quicker than what it did. Takes a while, eh? Takes a while. And I remember because I listen to a lot of podcasts, and everyone says it's like the eighteen month rule. Yeah. And it's fucking so true. Like it yep. took me, it took me seventeen months. 
It took me 17 months to earn my first paycheck from my KTR. Yeah, and, e- and even, and to be extremely clear here, it would be a small paycheck. Yeah, small. Not like, like fucking, nah, just so to get by. There's people There's people <clears throat> on minimum wage that get paid more than me. Yeah, yeah. At the time, but we're sort of like, we're sort of growing now where uh, I'm an incentive base. If I hit certain targets, I get a bonus, but still my base salary is very, very low. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing that people don't see, that they, they see the success and, and, yep. and don't get me wrong, right now the company w- would be worth something in, yep. And everything like worth quite a lot, you know, relatively speaking. But it's not for like five to six, ten years even. Yeah. That you start earning that fucking really, really good coin, getting the profits from. And it was, do you know, what? it was hard because like I mean, it, like they say, never do business with your friends. And yeah. like obviously, I've gone it with Chico and Corey, and we didn't expect it to grow as much as it did, even though I'd hoped it would, and I yeah. would work towards it. But like just having them conversations, they're not used to having like yeah. how much am I worth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> boys, like, how much should I be getting paid yeah. here? Like, and I remember, just... I remember asking for like very, very minimal. I just, I just need money just to get by. Like my contract, like my yeah. footy's about to stop. It's about October now. Yeah. I just need money just to like just pay my mortgage and some food and petrol. Yeah. That's all I need because I used to run the business out of a house from a spare room. Yeah. And then I remember like saying in the amount, and they're like, oh. I remember them going, oh, you're probably not worth that. Because they had a blue collar mentality of yeah. going like, if you're because I was working from home, they'll go, oh, people get that are getting paid that. They're leaving the house and going to a job. Yeah, and like laboring. Laboring. Yeah, they, they see it, but they don't realize that. That's, what they, that's, what they, that's how they pictured yeah. me being worth like a certain amount. Yeah. And like, I'm telling you, this is like, this is below minimum wage. Like yeah. no one even worked for this. And um, th- like I was just trying to explain it to them. I was like, oh, I can build websites, I can do marketing, I can do blah, 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 yeah, all yeah, this yeah. sort of stuff. And like they just couldn't see it like the way I could right, see I'm, it. I'm with you. Like it's the same thing with Bloke in a Bar. That people don't realize like I'm sitting there editing all day. I'm yeah. just fucking sitting on my computer just staring at it going watching YouTube videos. And, but yeah, you can't and measure Because you, you work from home. They're like, oh, you're at home all day. Like how good? <laughs> it's not how good <laughs> I'm staring at a screen the whole day going fuck I've got to edit another thing got to edit another yeah, thing yeah 100% take and this I'm, go to this yeah and like um, so yeah just sort of started from there and then sort of was like June last year that's when we could start to see a bit of reward like financially from it where yeah. we're not sort of chasing money to buy new collections it sort of started to flow and that's yeah. not long after we started vlogging yeah far out so like just such a journey there'd be so many like what's been what do you reckon the the toughest period what has been for YKTR like where's been the t- time you like you lost your confidence or you like because there's been times you know with the locker room bloke in a bar yeah. the bar where I'm like fuck this is daunting man Cut, yeah. I'm scared like yeah. I don't know if I can do this but then I pull myself in and go you know I can fucking do anything but you know what I mean you have those thoughts in your yeah, head yeah 100% like um there's probably been about two or three times yep. where like we'll sort of like half run out of like run out of money yeah going like oh fuck I think we're done here like, yeah. like we've put our money in stock or still sitting on stock that we couldn't sell like, yeah, yeah. I don't really know how to market or sell or like balance books or anything like that I was just pretty much a footy player trying yeah. to wing it Yeah. so there was probably two times we'd done like that and like sort of come to tax time how business tax is different compared to th- um, yeah. personal tax I'm like oh we've done this we're going to get some money back Yeah. go no, it goes, oh no, you just don't owe anything. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah. Yeah, but like you said, it's a tax write off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought tax write offs mean like money comes back. To yeah. like, it does, but when you balance it off like oh, yeah. 5 percent. And I remember walking out. I remember walking into the tax office, sorry, accountant, and going going to the boys. Oh yeah, we're going to be set. Like we we'll have money for collections. Yeah, yeah. Walking out, and it literally felt like someone punched me in the stomach. Go, you got you getting nothing back. And I was like, I was telling the boys like this yeah. is how I thought I interpreted the information that we we're going to get money back. Yeah. And then, they, they said, no, nah, I remember ringing them, bro, we're done here. Like, we've got no money. Ended up, yeah, ended up getting, like, more money. And so just, you actually said, bro, we're done, like... Yep, done. I sat there, sat, I remember sitting in the park for, like, an hour, like, my guts, wiggling. Yeah. like, the first time my guts have felt like that. Yep. In a long, long time. And then, um, I was just like, no, nah, we're done. And then, obviously, we found ways to get money. Yep. Um, just sort of, then just essentially grew from there. Another yep. time where, like, um, so obviously, we weren't seeing eye to eye with one of the boys and like I remember thinking like oh I mean like I was just a little bit angry at it yeah yeah and like we, we ended up working it out straight away yeah like and because we let it sit over a couple of days I was thinking oh fuck I'll like 
if you don't like it, I'll just walk out. Like you guys yeah. can have the, I didn't care. I was like, yeah. you guys can have the business. I'll just, I'll just go do something else. Yeah, yeah. And like I just, at the time, I just didn't feel like I was getting the respect I deserved. Yeah. And um, yeah, we ended up just talking and I was done in like two minutes. Like, yeah, I'd I mean, built, that's I'd relationships. Up, yeah. yeah, I'd built it up to this big thing, which it wasn't. But I mean, like, I remember at the time thinking, I'd happily walk away from this because yeah. I feel like I've developed the skills enough where I can start and go again. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, but it's like, it's just relationships in any business. You're always going to conf- like, you're going to have conflict. You're yeah. going to have conflict. It's just the way you resolve it that matters. 100%. Yeah. And right. like, because I had mentors, like, I was like, because we weren't seeing idol, I was like, you know, from footy, if someone comes out, you just go straight back at him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't work like that. You, he <sighs> might have some great ideas and he yep. just might want to have his feelings like heard. And I sort of done it like that. And once he told me, oh, f- like, but it makes so much sense. Mate, that's my number one downfall when dealing with staff. I'm used to footy, footy. where you just go, this is how it is. And they yeah. say, this is how it is. And then yeah. you just fuck, move on from just it or whatever. Just conversation yeah. Footy, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. just like, you just, you just like, you just come at each other and then you move on. Whereas in the working environment and normal people, you've got to be like, massage the conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah is that how you feel? Is that what yeah. you want? Mm. I'm terrible at it, bro. And I, that's my, probably my biggest weakness when dealing with staff is I'm really like straight up. Yeah. Like, boom. And then they can't handle that. Can't handle it. And so, yeah, I've got to get... It's it's just a different world. It's yeah. Good, and you can always improve, man. So 100%. Always 100%. improve. And that was, one of, that was a great lesson I learned. And like, yep. like because I was... I was in it and I was working from home and I was working 16 hour days. I was like, fuck, I, I, needed, I needed to control everything. Yep. I needed to hand like, post everything. I needed to write everything out. So yep. I, had, I had just like such a controlling mentality over the top of it where like, I didn't feel like the boys' ideas were as good as mine, as yep. arrogant as it sounds. But like once, all I needed to do was just involve them. Yeah, like, yeah, get oh, them involved. Hey, got any ideas for this? If you don't, cool. Sweet. If, if you do, like, I was, like it's up to me whether YKTR fails or not, essentially. Yep. But like, I just want to hear your ideas as well. And yep. that's, that's, what they, that's what they wanted. Like, yeah. you know I mean? They just wanted to be heard because yep. it is essentially their business as well. Yeah, 100%. And like, the, hard thing, the hard thing for you personally is like, because you are in it every day of every yeah. hour mm. and they're, they're training, so their focus is on something else. So you, if you build it up bigger, as you said, then yeah. it is. And they're not fucking, they're not sitting there going, fuck, 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 fuck. They're yeah. worried about their job or whatever. And I was like, what I used to struggle, or not struggle with, but I'm like, um, everyone was like, oh, you do like all the work. Like, how come you don't like, get more get of the business because like, yeah. that, that stuff does not matter to me when I'm back yeah, like, yeah. I've seen guys struggle off the footy obviously you're a great example of someone that's transitioned post footy and are you happier than you are when you were when playing, I was footy? playing footy now I am yeah, yeah I, can, I can say the exact same thing so yeah. I woke up this morning I'm like fuck how good I get to go to work yeah 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 and I, I can't think of it, too many other people there's not beside, enough footy players definitely not not enough footy players and like the, the way I see the boys they're, they're die hard footy players they, that's, they, they, they want to win they're competitive and if I could build YKT up to, into a position where they don't have to struggle after footy, yep. where they can walk into something they've built, like that was one of my first like motivations. And people were like, oh, you do all the work, why don't you get more credit? I'm like, I don't, like, I don't give a fuck yeah. about the credit. Yeah, it doesn't matter about the credit. Because if you start doing it for credit, that's when the cracks start appearing of yeah. like, your reason has to be pure, you know? And that, that, why, yeah. that was my underlying reason. I've got new reasons now, but that yep. one's still there where yep. like, even if they don't want to be a part of YKTR, they, they own a big share in it. And yep. if, say, five years from now, we can build it up to a position where they get a dividend yep. and they, they want to pursue their own dream. So I know Chico wants to open a cafe. Yep. But like the 18 month rule, where you're, like, you, you're not going to get paid money for 18 months, yep. here's a dividend to help you get by. Yeah. There's different ways. Normally, it's like really into shoes where he goes, I'd love to design my own shoe. Yep. It's easier to design your own shoe where you've got a platform to build off it, such 100%. as YKTR. 100%. So, all I'm, like, all I'm trying to do is help like my two best mates out after footy as well. Yep. No, it's a, and it's a, that's a noble cause. When you have a cause like that, she gets you can get through shit. What about the, what's been the best moment where you've sat beside each other and said, boys? Yeah, probably um, the first time I saw random walking past wearing my clothes. Yeah. Um, I'll wear our clothes, sorry. Um, yeah, just when walking past and like, because we're vlogging and all that sort of stuff and I was like, I, was like, I wonder if he's going to like recognize me or not. He yeah, just yeah. literally just walked straight past me and did not give me the time of day. That's even better though. Better, better. That's, that's exactly what that's I wanted. better, yeah, yeah. And it, it's got to the point now where like, we've always wanted our brand to outgrow like their personal brands, which yep. it ha- I feel like it has now yep. because I like can see all the metrics, all the analytics, all that sort of stuff and people were like, oh, you're lucky you got like Corey and Chico. Like it was... It was good at the time, but yep. you got to think there's people in footy with a lot bigger leverage than that. They yeah. have bigger followings, yep. like all that sort of stuff, but they don't see the back end of it. They don't yep. see all this behind it. No, which is, they don't. And also, there's been plenty of guys that have tried that you know to do that kind of way of marketing or whatever. And yeah. Do you know what? Do you know what's cool? Um, like since we've started vlogging, like I've had, 
I get a lot of messages coming through because I try and show the bad parts of the business as well because yep. I hate people thinking it's easy. <laughs> I hate the word luck. I hate the word luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're lucky you get to work. Oh, fuck, there's no luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work my ring out. So, like, I write blogs. I talk about all the different stuff, but, like, a lot of people don't want to hear it. They yeah, yeah. It. They want to just see that. They want to live vicariously. They pretend there is this life out there yep. that is so beautiful and so good that they may be able to attain one day, even mm. though they probably won't because they don't, because it's not how you think. They're lazy. Yeah, they're lazy. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, like, we've had probably about 12 people start clothing companies inspired by like they go oh you Fuck, that's sick yeah that's yeah. cool yeah, that's um cool. 20 people started vlogging wow that's cool yeah that's so cool. that like all that sort of stuff may, matters um have people come in for consultancy sessions about marketing yeah so it started to grow now where that's potentially somewhere like i get dms probably maybe about 10 20 a week going like i love what you're doing yeah you inspire me so that's that's like my initial thing was not to work for anyone else yep after that was like get the boys sorted after footy yep build a cool brand blah 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 and after I'm going into the phase where I love helping people now yeah, yeah. so whether it's like help building businesses for certain people like that that's what gets me like going now yeah. so I'm um, going to move into consulting obviously want to start a podcast as well that's yeah. aligned with businesses um, yeah that's what that's what gives me a kick now there's yeah. times I'm like I can't be fucked yeah. pretty much on cue DM coming yeah. love what you're doing and get you, get you going love your vlogs love your vlogs Love your brand. Yeah. And that's all that matters. hundred percent. And, and, and what the thing is like, what the difference to, to footy, for example, is like, there's a whole industry about producing people to play NRL. There's not a whole industry no. to produce someone to make a clothing brand. You have to start that from zero. 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 Doesn't yeah. exist, then it exists. Do you, do you know what's what, like, people like, how'd you get into, like, I don't know anyone who ran a business growing up. So I thought, if you own a business, you must be rich. Yep. Which yeah. Is, <laughs> yeah, not true. It's not actually that, the opposite. Yeah. All your not, money's going into the fucking business. Yeah, all your money goes into the business yeah. and you learn about GST and then yeah. you pay taxes. Yeah, oh, bro. So like, all your money just goes back into the business and yeah. I'm like, you don't know that. Yeah. And then, so what I want to try and be is like the example of, a um, few examples of like trying to teach just normal people how to start a business. Like I want to show them sort of the ins and outs of it. Also, want to be an example for like you don't have to lead into a mediocre life after football. Like yeah. football is a great time of your life. It's fuck so much fun. Oh, it's so cool. Like there's yeah. no there's no other job like it. Uh, yeah, yeah. But that that doesn't that doesn't end there. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. And you can use it as well. You can. That's that's what I talk about the most. You've got yeah. leverage right now. In Australia, we put people up on the pedestal who are sporting people, um, pat them on the back. So we think that their time is more valuable than our yeah. time. It's exactly the same. But I've talked to the boys that like. I read a blog post about it going like you've got to use your leverage now why people think you're cool because first year out of 40 a couple of people might re- like remember you yep. second year nobody gives a fuck no one I mean not even you know, it's, you know what I love now but like for me for my brand is people don't come up and say Denny Kemp anymore they come up and say broken a bar yeah and I'm like fuck my okay. own shit has outgrown my own NRL name you that's know what cool, I mean that's cool and so and I know it, what you mean uh, we're talking about like, I'll say that to the boys like, I've taken more photos now <laughs> running like ATR than yeah. I ever did playing footy yeah that's true it's so yeah. true because it's your baby it's your little thing but the thing with like footy <clears> players they think like when I was in footy I used to ask a lot of questions not not so much about footy but like what are you going to do after footy yeah I just got the same five answers like yeah. fucking back to digging holes coaching uh, go to the mines go to the mines yeah. and play like, a coach somewhere yeah um if you're like a gun, you're going to be on TV. Yeah. Like sport, you but there's only well. like one role then a what, year. Yeah, 100%. And it's not, and actually not on that much money initially. So, so what do they say? They go, mines, mines yeah. is a keen one. Go yeah. play park footy for yeah. cashies. Back to digging holes. Yeah. Fuck knows is probably. Yeah, oh, fuck bro, I don't know. Eh? That's, yeah. that's what I say. Fuck bro, I don't know. Eh? Yeah. Um, try and get in coaching. Yeah. PT, open a gym. Open yeah, there that's, that's what's it. I've never heard anyone say, I want to be a lawyer, right? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> you just I don't get it, Yeah, eh? like, you just don't. I want to be a doctor. I think I want to be a doctor. I've never heard that. <laughs> and then like, you get in the change room and all the boys are saying the same shit. You think that that's the only paths you can yeah. do yeah. or what your parents have done growing up. Yeah. So like, hopefully like, we can be the example that like, you can do something else. Yeah, 100%, especially with technology. With social, like, you know, when we were in footy, social media was fair, do you know what I mean? Like, don't post that on social oh, media. Oh, bro, 100%. That's so important. Yeah, man. bro, it's so it's everything. Like, I try to tell all the boys this. I put it this way, I say to the boys, you're on TV on a Friday night. There's probably a culmination of about a million dollars worth of sponsorship money. Looking at you. No, going in to be placed there. Yeah. Probably maybe even two million. You're on there for free. Mm. So there are companies paying two, you're, they might get 30 seconds on TV. Yeah. And they might pay 50, 60 grand or whatever. And then add on the fact that the ad they made cost 120 grand or whatever. Mm. So let's say 200 grand they've paid to be on for 30 seconds. Mm. You're on there. 
for fucking 80 minutes yeah. for free. Yeah. Why not use that? Why not they use that? I don't see it. I yeah. see it. And the way, the way I, like I've talked about this before in blog posts where like the way I'd use it, it's like you got to talk to like the brands closest to the people always going to win. Yeah. Locker room goes well because you, I, I look at your comments, you reply to everyone. Yeah. Good, yeah. bad, doesn't matter. You don't give a fuck. You're going to reply to them. It yeah. creates engagement. Yeah. I do the exact same thing. Anyone that comments on us, I'll reply to them. Anyone that DMs me, I'll reply to them. Yeah. So if I was a footy player, say, like Alex Glenn and Jordan Carr, they do it, they do it well. Like yeah. They're trying to provide they content. Yeah. Like they're, they're, they're like looking forward. But imagine if they go like, Hashtag Suncorp Stadium after a game when you're not going to go to sleep anyway yep. and go, thank you for coming. Thanks for right. coming. Do that to the top 20 posts, blah, blah, blah. All you got to do is talk to the one right person. Yeah. So you do, you do 20 posts around over 26 rounds over, say your career goes for eight years. You're just going to talk to the one of the right people that are going to help you in the future. Yep. And if you can build your brand up where you leave the game with 100,000 followers, oh. that's lever- how much, le- what, what could Locker Room do with 100,000 followers? Oh, like if we had 100,000 followers in YKTR, it's game over. It's game over. Yeah. Game over. Because once you get to that point, it's underpriced attention. Yeah, you right. can put something up for free. You get yep. people paying you and they, they don't see, they only see like, yep. oh, I can get kombucha, I can get a yeah. free coffee. I can, business. <laughs> I, can I, go, I say to the boys all that, like, like, what, what would hurt? You walk off the field, Wayne says his shit or whoever, get to your locker room, pull your phone out, Instagram live, Q&A after the game. I do, I've, I've said the exact same thing. Like it takes fucking five minutes and people would froth, froth on it. it. Yeah. Oh, You're I, in the change room doing a QA live on Instagram. People would froth on it and you make it a weekly thing. Like yeah. questions with Alex Glenn or fucking Denon's DMs. I don't fucking know. But, and you, make it, it, you don't have to produce it. You don't have to edit it. It's just you it's a, and yeah. you make it a weekly thing and it's always at 20 minutes after the game or some yeah. shit like that. I, I 100% agree with you. You'd, you'd go off. You'd go off. Bro, it'd be so easy. You're just answering questions. Because you know why? You take out the middle person. Yeah. Like footy players, like they they think social media is like a burden because a lot of it comes through journalism. Yeah. So in footy, to get, so you're the journalist. Oh, so you're the people. The middle here is the journalist. Yeah. I'm the footy. Like, and they filter the message. Yeah, they filter. They filter the message for yeah, you. Yeah. But if you go straight to the person, yep. it's like people would froth that. Hundred percent, and it's so easy. Like, just but pull you, your phone out. Boom, live. What's up, guys? Oh. Just in Suncorp Stadium. Yeah, we didn't win tonight. I fuck. I missed three tackles. I really felt. That's, that's the key. You got to be honest as yeah. well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I missed and three tackles. This, this. I've I've told Normie to do it. I was like, go. Well, probably not after this year. <laughs> Don't do it. This <laughs> probably year. getting pepper the whole time. You know, <laughs> Yeah, but imagine you go, here's the broadcast, um, here's the rules, just don't like bag any of my teammates. Yeah. Like, we've got a coach, we don't need another one. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, if you've got any questions, let me answer them. You know why? It's because the other boys in the team would spray the fuck out of them. That's why. That's why I feel like, yeah, I know, I know. We don't care, but yeah, you know but what it's like, bro. That was like when we started, we were like, we're going to start a clothing brand, boys, like, no one's going to buy your t shirts. Yeah, we're going to start job. vlogging. What's a vlog? Oh, we yeah. just drag a camera out. Like, no one's going to watch that. 100%. Like, our vlogs get like 100, yeah. 150,000 views 100%. On, on Facebook. Yeah. That's um, a, and, and also, people don't realize it's, it's not like old Facebook where they just send the views out to anyone. Yeah, now. yeah. The view count has actually reduced, but it's real views, like real. as in the area that you are in kind of thing. Whereas like back in the day, they would literally just send it out to fucking wherever. Mm. So you, if you, I mean, you know all the fucking analytics and that, you can look yeah. at them. And so, yeah, that's actually a legitimate view. It's, it's three seconds, but you can you can see where, how long yeah. they've watched it for, blah, blah, blah. Um, retarget them too yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't talk about that 100%. But, um, yeah but like it's like people look at our YouTube and they're like oh they've only got 4,000 views but if you watch that same vlog on Facebook like that's around YouTube's like not big in Australia though for yeah that's yeah that's Tiny. Tiny. and people Tiny. are like oh you should be promoting through there because like you can monetize it through ads like, I don't really care about monetizing off through ads but also like that's not the value like nah. YouTube ads you're not going to get rich off you're nah. going to get rich off your own business being promoted mm. in the long run you might make a little bit of money short term YouTube you, we're talking the next 10 20 years and someone goes to me like why don't you put the link of your YouTube and your Facebook and promote it through there and I was Facebook. like that's friction that's friction yeah, yeah exactly like someone goes click a link like oh no I'll no, just keep scrolling exactly. I, want, I want our vlog boom, boom straight, straight in there. front of you what's this yep. watch 100% bro and we won't we don't well, we we make money off it through the back end of having their product at the yep. bottom of our sale funnel. But like, it's just value. Like we're not trying to sell you anything. Exactly. It's free foremost. content. Free content. And also it's, it's not about making money that day. It's not about making money in 12 months. It's about making money in 15 years or 10 years where the, or, you know, five years where you've built that rapport. And if, I don't think, if you're in it for money. You, yeah, it's not even about money. Yeah, it's, money. Not, it's about branding. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. It's about having a brand that, you, like if someone said to me, you can continue to do everything you do and you'll learn enough to live comfortably for the rest of your life don't doesn't mean you have to fry, drive a ferrari just comfortably mm. i would say lock me in give 100%. me that contract let's do it and leave an impact yeah like, exactly you know what I mean? like yeah. That, that stuff matters i feel like whenever you're in a business where 
I think there's a saying like if profits like let profit be the outcome not the reason yeah yeah, yeah. so like you, you see like a lot of the improvement schemes they're where yeah, yeah, they're, like, yeah. they're trying to make a quick buck yeah. it's like the equivalent of doing a chip and chase in footy like you yeah. might get that get the ball back score but everyone knows it's coming like yeah. it's so obvious for yeah. next time where building a business like us where we've solely built about value and branding yeah. it's like kicking along in the corner and just, 100% like for the first time, we're only in the first 10 minutes of the game. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're thinking 80 minutes, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. And the right thing to do in the first 10 minutes of the game is kick long, kick put it on. in the corner, do the right thing, yep. keep turning up. 100%. And yeah, keep turning up to the main one. <laughs> like, just somehow keep turning up. Um, all right, uh, what's called the best favourite rapper of all time? Favourite rapper? Yep. Uh, J. Cole. J. Cole of all time? Yeah. Damn, what's, what do you think of um, COD? Uh, yeah, good, good. Do you I, like I, it? I feel like, yeah... Actually, no, let me, let me, he'd be my favourite one. It'd probably have to be Tupac. Tupac, yeah. Yeah, just ly- lyrically, flow, like... Impact. Impact. Yeah. Even those interviews he used to have when he was in jail. Do you watch those on YouTube? Yeah, it's like he's fucking predicting the future. Predicting the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like everyone would have said he was crazy at the yeah. time. Do you, know what yeah. I mean? Do you reckon they say that about Kanye now? Or is he, is he too far gone? No, no, no. It's, this is, because I'm white, it's hard for me to talk about this, but I feel like... The way he said it was totally wrong about the slavery thing. But the idea behind it was But wrong. what he was trying to say is that we're mentally enslaved right now. Mm. And what he was trying to say back then is like, he was just creating a parallel to the fact that not only were they actually slaved, mm. they were mentally brought down by, you know, the, the American. And so I just think he said it wrong. But, oh, I, okay. you know, I, I think that um, he's a genius. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, it's hard to talk about because you know that, that's such a hectic topic. Yeah, hundred percent. You don't, you don't disrespect talk about that. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. But yeah, I'd probably go to Park. Two Park. Obviously, growing up on him and going to parties and. Yeah, oh, bro. <laughs> Fuck. What's the two of America's most wanted? Oh, damn. He um, makes you feel gangster. Right, hundred percent. Right? I thought I was the biggest gangster <laughs> in the world. Listen to him. He's, he was my first CD. Two Park's greatest hits. Yeah, oh, great album. Um, favorite movie of all time. I don't think I have one, eh? I, I, I was going to go cliche, like Cool Runnings. I cool Runnings? Yeah, no, that's not cliche. I haven't heard that one before. Like, oh, no, really? I said that. Yeah, most is Remember the Titans. That's the most. That is a good movie. That's a fucking great movie. Um, best prank you've seen of all time in, like, the Footy Boys? I can't, oh, I can't think you'll of one. Think of, you'll think of one laugh when you walk. Yeah, away, I know. Man. I yeah, know, I, should I, know. Have, I, I, should, I always should tell the boys that one before I fucking say it. I just like to throw it out there. Yeah, sorry, man. If you stumped me. I've been out in the footy game too long. <laughs> trying to sell T-shirts. Next, um... Next 12 months, if everything happens perfectly for you, where are you? Um, actually, I spent the weekend running down a bunch of goals and hopefully I'll tick off three quarters of them. Yeah. Um, probably, hopefully, past 100 vlogs, yep. past 50 podcasts, uh, YKTR is going well, um, leaving an impact and yep. that's about it. So just kind of like, what about YKTR being in David Jones? Uh, I think wholesaling is not a big thing for us at the moment. Okay. Like we'd rather you come through us, but we are about to launch. We're about to go launch in a few different directions at the moment. So okay. it's sort of that exciting, soon. exciting time where we. It's like that. Like this is great saying we're fair's the indicator. Like yep. this makes me nervous of like, we're moving in a different different direction. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, still got the base kind of. The yep. good thing is is that you control that whole. The, the the buy and the sale like you control the funnel of it whereas yeah. like the hard thing of it with the thing with beer is like like we've got gatekeepers we have to get through like yeah. bottle shops they're the gatekeepers and yeah. also then you've got like the big companies like Line and that and BWS is owned by DM Murphy's um yes, sorry BWS and DM Murphy's are owned by Woolworths First Choice Cigarettes is owned by Coles and they're the gatekeepers between mm. you know us getting in and stuff whereas most people don't buy beer online Mine, yeah. it's just, just not what's that it's just just a cultural thing I think like it's you know you've got to be there to sign for it it's a, a, plus, a, a like over 18 thing yeah. people just don't buy it like it's, it's just not in, in, a, in Queensland you're not even allowed to sell it online oh really in New South Wales you've got to do all this bloody yeah, it's, it's yeah. licensing is, that's that's a hard thing about like liquor is like, all the licensing and the, like stuff around it my um like just following off the back of that like my ideal like my goal was always to be like be able to work anywhere in the world yep. where I don't have to be there and that's how I'm trying to build YKTR yep. with the systems we've got in place yep. um, yeah so obviously like 12 months from now YKTR is probably double like successful as it is now yep. um, our other business that we're going to branch off to is slowly starting okay. to gain some momentum Oh, has that been announced or? Yeah, oh, it's just like a different brand of clothing, but like okay. we're just going to separate it a little bit okay. and go down a different avenue. Um, yeah, hopefully helping a few people along the way with a podcast. Yep. Um, vlogs, hopefully one of the best vloggers in Australia as well. Yep. Um, 
just happy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> just just like living the dream, really. Yeah, like, honestly, this is like this is like. I know people measure success in a lot of ways and a lot of times it's material things like a Lamborghini yeah. is like the epitome of success to some people but I, like you'd understand this that first 10 seconds when you wake up in the morning yeah like, oh, yeah <laughs> they were like when I walk into the bar and I like see a bloke in a bar and like I was like fuck this is, is this mine, mine? <laughs> is this mine what yeah. the fuck like uh, no like if I'm with like a friend or whatever yeah and I'll just be like it doesn't. This doesn't feel like mine, eh? Like yeah. this is not mine. This is fucking weird. Do you, as. do you know what's cool? Like having like a product or a business is like, like they see it, like they'll see beer as a currency. They see like clothes as a currency. Like yep. if they do something nice for you, it's just cool. You can go. Oh, like for you, you can go. Oh, fuck. Here's a here's, yeah. Here's a free beer. Yeah. Here's some beer. Like, we yeah. can go. Oh, here's a free shirt. Yeah. Hundred percent. Just have that sort of leverage of we can give something to yep. someone and they think that's valuable. Yeah. Like, yep. everyone loves clothes, everyone loves fucking outfits. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So we're in the right industry. <laughs> Name a better duo. <laughs> oh, team up. Uh, um, yeah, all right, bro, that's it, man. We're going for a frigging hour and 40. Mm, thanks for having yeah, me. No, Can but, talk. Yeah, mate, thank you so much for coming on, bro. And yeah, um, bro, I, you know, I love what you're doing. I love YKTR, all that shit. So love it. In the next 12 months, you'll be hitting those goals. You go past that, I reckon. Hope so. Boom. Oh, that's forward. Forward pass, Mr. Cummins, you dickhead. Well, I can't speak. Forward a mile. He's let it go. That one, Stevie Wonder is in. Now five yards forward. Well, I can't speak.